Friends, welcome to the skilling open knockouts. There are eight players remaining. Uh, there are games loaded up, and our, our main man, Hikaru, will be taking on the Frenchman. That is Maxime vache -Lagrave. Anna, there's some other very spicy matchups. Also, uh, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, Levy. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around. I, I was streaming earlier, and then I realized I didn't do the switch as planned. But we are here now. We are here both on Hikaru's channel, and today it's on my channel, too. The show, welcome to the quarterfinals of the $1.5 million Champions Tour. This is the first, like as Levy said, the skilling open. Yesterday, I organized a tournament that was the unskilling open. And I must say... It was a very popular tournament. It had a record breaking over 600 participants. I never in my life had so many participants in a viewer tournament. So shout out to all of you who came by with the Hikaru Raid, with the Gotham Chess Raid yesterday to play the Unskilling Open. It's literally all of my streams every day are the Unskilling uh, Open. <laughs> um, we, have a, we have the bracket there uh, at the, I guess at the, at the, at the bottom middle and there, there's not much else to say. Uh, the, the, the matchups as they are today are Hikaru taking on MVL. That's Maxime vache uh number one French player in the world, top 10 player in the world, uh, former number one in the world in Blitz. He was like 29.50 uh, in, in, in Blitz and w with, uh, with Magnus and Hikaru kind of in the top three. Then we have the matchup between, obviously, uh, Magnus Carlsen, and uh, Anish Giri. Mm -hmm. So, and where is Firuja? Well, I'm going to let Anna uh, talk about that because that's heartbreaking. So, Anna, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Levi cannot talk about it because basically he treats Firuja as if he was uh, Levi's son, although Levi is turning 25 and Firuja is 17. So, hopefully, mathematically, it's not possible that uh, Levi actually is the father of Firuja. But he's a very strong, very talented player who beat Dingli Ran, for instance, yesterday, among many of the other victims that he was collecting. He was stomping the field until Hikaru stomped him. And even like this, Firuja had a really good chance to make it to the top eight. But in the final crucial round, he lost to Lac Van Gliem. And Lac Van Gliem, with that win, still couldn't qualify. But he also grabbed Firuja's hand and both of them fell down that cliff. That means they are out of the top eight. They are not part of the event anymore. Hopefully, we will see them back at future events of the Champions Tour. But not today, not for the quarterfinals. Yeah, and it caused some it caused some debate. I mean, uh, Ali Reza actually won six games. He got six games. He got two. Uh, sorry, um, six wins. Uh, he got four draws, and he lost five times. He actually, I guess, he was six and five, uh, because yeah. that would mean he got eight points, right? So six wins and four. So he won yeah. the most, but he also lost the most. He was the most decisive player, uh, playing the most dynamic and, and interesting chess. But the way that the tiebreak system works is if you lose to the wrong people who are tied with you in the end, you don't make it. And mm -hmm. that's what happened. Uh, and, well, you know, it uh, it sucks and it caused some debate. And I'm not here to make the rules. I'm just here to do commentary. So... That's, yeah, it's um, not easy, but uh, there has to be a tiebreak system and it always will favor some players and others will be out. So difficult to know what's fair, what's not fair. What we know is that Firuja will be back for future events for sure. And he's such a talented player, still only 17, potential future world chess champion. And as Hikaru tweeted too yesterday, uh, quoting the world champion Magnus Carlsen, you need to beat them until you can. That was the Queen Takes B7 moment from yesterday's game. Hikaru winning against Firuja in style. But yes, he did say, you got to make sure you win until you can beat these young, talented players. Very true. Very true, very true. Uh, and, uh, you know, if uh, Firuja made it, then I don't know what he what he would have seeded. But if he would have been eighth, he would have played Magnus Carlsen in, in, in the first match. But if he was seventh, he would have played Hikaru. So... He, you know, we would have had our hands full. Uh, we still have our hands full, and we will have a move any second now. Uh, the interesting thing is, I believe that all of my games got loaded. Um, nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing if maybe I have, meaning every single match got, got like loaded in. Okay, so here we go. We have E4. I think Hikaru will go for E5. Uh, MVL mm -hmm. is like a lifelong E4 player. Uh... Now, the format, my friends, this is how it works. The players play head-to-head -head four rapid games today. 
unless it's decided within the first three. So mm -hmm. if you win two and a half out of the first three, you don't need to play the fourth game. 15 yeah. minute, 10 second bonus. If it's tied two to two, chat, you might remember uh, over the course of the last year that they play playoff and tie break after that. That's not the case today, actually. If it's two to two, that's it. And then tomorrow, if it's tied, then that is when they play the Blitz and the Armageddon. Do we like yeah. that? Do we like that? How do we feel about that? Um, I was confused today because I was explaining to Jacob, to Yamato Cannon. I had a coaching session with him and I was like, oh yeah, we are in the quarterfinals and you know, we have the system, you know, it's rapid first and then Blitz and Armageddon. Like he remembered how the previous mm -hmm. format was. I was like, yeah, that's the same we have, but no, they, you're right, Levy. They slightly changed it in a way that only tomorrow, if the match is still a tie, that's when we will get to see Blitz and Armageddon. I guess it's still a really exciting format because knockout is always exciting. I kind of liked how all the other um, Magnus Tour mini matches where every single match had a winner. In this case, it could be that day one is a 2-2 and day two will decide everything. Yeah, this is... Um... Okay, this... This is already off to a hot start, so let me just get the chat kind of caught up to speed. Uh, Hikaru uh, has the black pieces in game one against MVL. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the Berlin defense. Clearly, they are very well prepared because they have played 20 moves already. Uh, this is a Spanish where black takes on e4. There is a trade of queens. Black loses the right of castling. And then black plays back to e8 to defend the f7 pawn from a move like knight to g5. For mm -hmm. beginners, this might look completely insane. And well, and then there's rook h6, which also looks insane. Um, a trade to damage white's pawn structure. Uh, and Hikaru then routes the knight. Oh my god, f5, e7, d5, c3, a4, Anna. How are we going to teach this to the beginners in the chat? Um, well, uh, welcome to Super Grandmaster level chess. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, Lavi, over to you. <laughs> now, these Berlin endgames are always so complex. And uh, the way this, this knight has landed from d5 all the way gone to gobble up the pawn, and now it's on a4. Not an easy thing to, to explain, so I'm going to rely on Gotham chess this time. Yeah, I, I can't speak to the particular move orders. All I can say is uh, that, uh, like, basically from from this point forward, once once the Berlin Endgame begins, even before White plays H three, there is like seven or eight or even up to ten different ways that White can configure their pieces, and then there are for each of those multiple ways that Black can configure their pieces. So you have to learn every iteration of the Berlin defense. Uh, because you need to know how to equalize with black and then ultimately even maybe play the position for a win. So all of those endgames are 0-0-0, zero, 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 but they all give different practical chances. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, chat, welcome uh, welcome to the big leagues. This is what we talk about. Big leagues it is, and speaking of big leagues, Hikaru did tweet as well earlier that he played against Envia, the last game he played against the Frenchman, was in a sub battle for Gotham Chess against Blitzstream. Blitzstream mm -hmm. is the number one French language chess channel. Shout out to Blitzstream for his really successful streams and the sub battle where he tried to field MVL on the top board. But Lavi said, you know what? I have a friend too. His name is Hikaru. Well, I had no choice. Uh, we, you know, uh, we, we, we entered a sub battle and my understanding was we'll get a master level player to play on board one because that's what all, all of us yeah. do. And then Blitzstream decided to show up to the playground, you know, with a guy that had a that had a baseball bat. So, you know, I had to call up my boy who's <laughs> seven feet tall and who eats baseball bats for breakfast. <laughs> and my boy came and they fought. I had no choice. I didn't want him. Hikaru was like about to go driving somewhere. Uh, but yeah, and then this is kind of a little bit of a more high uh, high stakes rematch. Mm -hmm. so Hikaru seems very well prepared, I have to say. Uh, 1747 on the clock. So position looks quite good for him. It does look good. And I like the speed, the fact that he almost gained three minutes by now. Remember, the time control is 15 minutes with a 10 second increment, meaning that Hikaru has been collecting time constantly. Maxime Vashelagraf also has been playing really fast. 
but now I think this is a moment where they both will start spending a little longer. At some point, the preparation finishes. We are on move 2020. How many moves have they memorized for this opening variation? It's, it's crazy how sometimes these theoretical lines can be super long. 20 moves, 25 moves, even 30 moves in some of the openings. Yeah, and actually... The board on the bottom left, guys, uh, the board on the bottom left, it says that a niche is uh, is better. You see the eval bar minus 1.1, but that's because actually the depth of that computer doesn't go below a certain point. Actually, if you look at the clocks, Magnus is the one playing faster. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a niche who's down four minutes. This looks like preparation. And the interesting thing about this game on the bottom left of your screen, I'll, I can actually, I'll, I'll, let me put it on the big screen uh, for a second. I, I just got to get Hikaru here. There's a million games here. So let me just get Hikaru. Okay, perfect. I'll get him on the, mm -hmm. on the bottom screen. I'll make sure we see it from Hikaru's perspective. Okay. Anish Giri versus Magnus Carlsen. One of Anish's biggest wins over Magnus came in this, like, Ragozin defense. This is the bishop before Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, I made a video about it, and Anish told me he loved me. I don't know how that went over in his household, but... Um, he the said point... he loved you, and just a few hours ago, he said on his Twitter that Magnus Carlsen is not his crush. Like, this is, I thought, what's with the Bromans? Now you are the new Bromans? I, Levy? Want to update think, us? Listen, the first time Anish and I ever spoke verbally to each other uh, on stream, he said that he thinks I'm the next big thing. I was honored because I think he's the next big thing. So it's, a, Ooh, you know. back at you. Look at these two. Now, there's a lot of posturing in this game, guys, because this is the exact opening that Anish used to beat Magnus. Magnus surprised him, and now they go straight back into it, Anna. Do you think this, there's some psychological games here? I'm gonna beat you in that game you beat me in? Or is Magnus about to end up on a second Gotham chess video? What's gonna happen here? <laughs> Definitely lots of psycho psychological battle on the board and off the board. Both of them tweeted about this match, uh, about that guy. Check out the, the tweet of Magnus Carlsen. Check out how Anish responded to it. And uh, now that we know that Levy is Anish's new crush, I wonder how this opening will turn out. Yeah, Anish takes on h4. It looks far more natural to the human eye to play g4. I, I, I don't quite understand why you wouldn't. I mean, g4 looks really good, but I guess he didn't like that the knight would get to the f4 square? I don't know. Could be, yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna take um, a look at the database because I'm really curious what's going on. Oh, there's probably on. nothing. There's probably... <laughs> what's going on here? There is probably nothing here. What actually was the novelty in this game, Anna? Zero games for g takes h4, this current position, but after f takes g3, this position still has occurred in one game. Just a few months ago, February 2020, between Haik Martirosian and Surya Ganguly. Where? Title Tuesday? Um, I wonder, because at this stage, I would think it's a Title Tuesday. It, but where it was must be this Title game? Tuesday. Yeah, it has to be Title Tuesday. Um, wow, Pro that's... Chess League group stage. Yeah, almost Title Tuesday. Pro Chess League it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it must have been a lot earlier this year. Like, like Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. That's that's th this is the most peculiar thing about this Rogozin defense. When Black puts the knight in the center, you guys notice that this is not how we encourage beginners to, to do stuff to play like this, but it works in this particular way. Wow. And Magnus doesn't even take the pawn. He plays bishop to b5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This must be prep. This must be some sort of deep engine, some deep state engine preparation here. Oh it's my god. It's got to what? be that. It's got to be that. This is wild. So what happens if you take on g3? Probably knight e5, right? Be, um, well, wait a second. In terms of psychological factors and such, if if this is a new position after g takes h4, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, Magnus spent two and a half minutes. I, was, I thought he played faster, but no, two and a half minutes of thinking, then he plays bishop b5. Mm -hmm. So does that tell us that Magnus is not aware of this g takes h4, but he confidently goes for a move that gives up yet another pawn, and he mm. believes in his calculation. He believes that he has the right assessment here, even if he did not prepare this. No, I actually think that it, it's a matter of, you know, you, you remember the fg3 position in your head, and you remember mm. if they play g4, but you don't quite remember. And so, like, uh, you don't quite remember if they take on h4. So, like, they take and you go... I don't think I'm supposed to take. 
I think it's bishop okay. b5, but let me but let me just work through it. And so, you know, mm -hmm. now he gets the bishop b5, so. I see. Um, yeah, yeah um, in that game, the one uh, game I mentioned, Mar Martyrosian versus Gangul in the pro chess league, g4 was played by black, it's true. So that's the deviation. Um, did black Heike did not win that game? Who won that game? Uh, yes, white won that game. Yeah. So it looks good for what for black to play g4, but maybe it's not so good. It like just optically kind of looks nice. But okay, and uh, wait, wait, is this my analysis or no? No, he hasn't moved yet. He hasn't moved yet. Okay. Um, Hikaru apparently has a slight advantage. Looks like MVL is a little bit uh, MVL is a little bit misstepping, but mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, apparently, uh, Anish has made a horrible mistake now. Uh, after queen d6. Ooh. And Evaluation the engine... bar, oh yeah, God. it's jumping up absolutely in favor of Magnus Carlsen. This is only move 12, and it claims that Magnus has an almost decisive advantage. Yeah, this is the this is the scary stuff, is that if you play around in the same sandbox, but, uh, you know, you, uh, you risk that one guy did more preparation. Well, Anna, you know, the engine, you know what the, the, the engine move here, according to mine, is to castle. Still not taking back... <laughs> And to just castle, and for example, if black plays queen takes g3, this is terrible, because white plays knight to e2, and now a rook attacks the knight on c6, and the knight attacks the queen, and then black is lost. And if you go back, for example, then white goes knight e5, and there's too much pressure. So, yeah, 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 okay. So the engine says that castle king side is the best move for white, and it only says that that's the only way Magnus can have such a big advantage. So if he plays anything but castle king side, the position is still unclear. But castle king side, white should have a really good advantage. It does make sense to castle, as scary as it looks, but the, the pawn on g3 is not hanging with a check. Queen takes g3, you don't really want to allow. Knight yeah, exactly. e5 would be a way to prevent it. But that mm -hmm. would be another move that he could consider. Yeah, apparently knight e5 is no good because black plays f6. Ooh. Somewhere Ben Feingold twitches uncontrollably, but the problem <laughs> here is that the knight is under attack and there's there's nothing good. If you take c6, I take, and now the bishop is under attack, so the bishop has to move, and now black is the one moving. Uh, and if knight g6, I don't actually move my rook. <laughs> I play queen g3, as Anna said, check, and I win the knight, because I attack both directions. So, queen's OP. Uh, and I think, Anna, Magnus will actually castle, because by process yeah. of elimination, there's not many moves, and so I, exactly. think he will, I think he'll play it. I think you are right. It's so likely that we're going to see this position. What a chaotic position to have after only 12 moves, but if Magnus casts and castles, it seems that that's a really nice, almost decisive advantage. I did not expect this game to start in this sharp fashion. I thought it would be a more solid approach, but uh, Giri went for it too. Giri chose this variation where you go g5h5 and the game becomes really complex. Yeah, like th that's the thing about these um, the, the, these Ragozan defenses. Like bishop b4 is fine. It's a great opening. Like play like this if you're if you're new to the game, even if you're an intermediate player. But play bishop b6 and uh, sorry b6 and bishop b7 and just develop naturally. Don't hop in with the knight and then play mm -hmm. like g5 and h5. Th th this is totally unnecessary and will only lead to some sort of explosion in the kitchen. Uh, Magnus actually did take back on h4. And uh, after queen g3, I'm not so sure what is the hmm. plan. Yeah, I guess it's easier for us here uh, sitting with uh, the supercomputer um, as our best friend to support our analysis. But for a human being, Castle King side when g3 was hanging was perhaps a bit too much. So even the world champion decides to to instead of go for that mess with Castle King side, mess, but now we know advantage, G takes H4, throws the game back into a 0, zero, zero territory. God, you know, God, you know, uh, God only knows what that means. <laughs> yeah, it means anything can happen. It's such a chaotic position. Now, really, it's a three possible result game again. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is... a. Uh... Like, like I said, the, only the engine gods truly understand what it means. 
when it's zero 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 it, it's chaos if queen g3 you abandon the d5 pawn in many ways queen g3 backfires because king f1 unpins you and now you are threatening to take so i don't know i don't know it's it's going to be brute force calculation let's go take a look at nepo mm -hmm. okay i clicked the wrong game uh <laughs> there is no nepo here mr nepo where are you nepo 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 okay here it is wow uh where the are pieces, all the pieces have <laughs> disappeared from the board by this time we tune in. They moved 26. What opening this was? Uh, Grunfeld, oh, I would Knight think. Knight c3. Look at that. Knight c3. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he plays, he plays, he's playing the, uh, the Joe Bava London. He's, he's being a little bit ironic. <laughs> and yeah, well, this is just one way to get Nepo out of his preparation. Now it's just a very close position. Nepo is a Grunfeld player. So I, I kind of like what Levon did in the opening. Actually, I think I think his position was kind of good. But yeah, black is completely okay, and they just traded all their pieces. What are you gonna do? Well, this is gonna be the quickest draw of the round. Remember, uh -huh. this is the quarterfinal, so we have four matches instead of the sixteen players we started with. We are down to eight, and every second day, another half of the field is gone. It's a knockout format with two day matches. Then we are left with one more match we haven't tuned into yet. We could take a quick look at the start of the game between Wesley So and Timur Rajabov. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and it's already a draw. So looks like they can... Um... Oh, they just repeated. Oh, they just <laughs> repeated. Okay. That's pretty funny. That th th This was the, the gentlemanly uh, repetition of moves here. It's, I mean, it's King, Rook, and 3. King, Rook, and 3. Same side of the board. Uh, they, don't, they don't play these out. They just... Agree to a drop. So yeah, what's mm -hmm. go Oh my gosh, I clicked the wrong one again. There it's it alright, there are too many tabs. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here with, with, with So and Raja? I like how this game is looking very complex, because Wesley So was very conservative and solid in the preliminary stage, but you cannot have the same strategy in the knockout format, because every time, well, the mini-match, there's one match today, tomorrow another one but after those two matches there will be a winner you cannot just draw your games and move on yeah today if your match ends two to two it's just half a point per player but tomorrow if your match is tied again they make you play blitz and then they make you play an mm -hmm. armageddon so you got nowhere to go uh mm -hmm. you can draw one match but after that you've got to you've got to yeah. really step it up and try to try to push here uh, i like this position for wesley the knight on f5 is very very nice I like it too. It's it's always so scary when your opponent makes it to f5 uh, with the knight, or if it's from Black's perspective, the knight to f4. Rajabov is heading toward f4, but I assume Wesley wants to capture that knight. So it's not the same that Black can jump to f4, White will take that knight, while the white knight on f5 is standing nicely. Very difficult to chase it away. Even if the knight was not on g6, you can't push the g pawn because the h6 pawn is always hanging. So it's very annoying to have that beast around your king. Um, pleasant position for white, at the same time, not so easy to make progress because you would need more peace on the king side to attack or do something in the center. But I think black has a good control of the center at the moment and pushing d5 doesn't seem to lead anywhere if the queen moves to the only square mm -hmm. that it has, f6. Yeah, queen on f6. If your knight was on h2, that would be golden because you'd play knight g4 and you'd win the queen. But if you try to go for that, like d5 could, and then you try to play knight h2, uh, first of all, I think black just plays h5. And second of all, I think black can also move the rook. So black plays this kind of silly looking move. Uh, but, the, but what happens now is that the queen has a getaway to d8. And the rook takes control of the file. So d5 does look decent, but it doesn't unfortunately win the game kind of on the spot. Mm -hmm. Um uh, let's see. Let's go back to the Geary game for now. Okay, well, Anish is threatening, like, mate, basically. That's good. Mm -hmm. That seems smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, Hikaru, meanwhile, yeah, wait, wait, what's going on? Hikaru's just thinking. Hikaru's been thinking, like, seven minutes. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> that is a long time. Hold on. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm right here, guys. You see the cursor on the on the bottom left of your screen. Uh, 
what is Hikaru deliberating? His F so I guess MVL has some maybe okay. And Hikaru just played Bishop E6, attacking the Rook. Uh, if the Knight takes, then you'll take with the with the Pawn or the Rook. Actually, they both look okay. Um, and then he's just got to get his Rook into the game somewhere. D4, D3, D2 in the future. D5 is nice. <laughs> Our mm -hmm. man got stuck in the bathroom. Yeah, Hikaru. Uh, Hikaru went to pee and uh, got locked in there by the janitor in the TSM facility. Hopefully that's not the situation, but it made me really worried that he wasn't making a move for a while. So the thing about um, speed demons is uh, they 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 think, but they're more than capable, uh, even when they're low on time, to just play extremely fast. Mm -hmm. So one thing about MVL, I've said this before, it does seem like sometimes in certain positions he could be slightly worse, but when he has to defend... Uh, he doesn't defend perfectly. Maybe that's just against Magnus, because you play Magnus. Hmm. But it definitely feels that way. Uh, and let's see if he's able to, uh, to defend the position here. I don't like his structure. I don't like his pawns. I also don't like that. It's looking ugly. It's such an unusual position. I can't believe that... Uh we are treated this way. I really thought this is going to go solid, you know, something very classical. No, at the moment, neither player has castled. White will never, ever castle with that king on f1. It's already illegal. You move the king, you move the rooks, you, you can forget about castling, obviously. Will black ever castle? Maybe not even black will castle, because castle queenside will castle into the c file and white's attack. This is a crazy position. This is a very crazy position. Um, why is, here, here it's already showing some big advantage for MVL. Why is it showing some big advantage? Knight e6, rook e6, yeah, I'm, I'm very perplexed. Why can't you play, what? Why is this so good for, uh, for white? It's apparently saying it's a winning advantage. If you take, if you take, and I mean, taking is a very hmm. natural consideration, so, what was good here? What what was Hikaru uh, deliberating so much about? I guess it's that his 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 rook is kind of his rook is kind of stuck a little bit. Like if h five, his only move is to go rook h six, which is directly in the line of this bishop. But he goes bishop e six, and supposedly, if you take with a pawn, what happens? I'm rook scared. I don't understand. I'm just scared, really scared here. It, I think I think why it's showing such a massive uh, balance in in White's favor is that Machine is like, okay, there's no immediate win, but the end game is winning, and and here's why. Mm -hmm. But it, they're humans. Yeah. So. Yeah, the good thing, as you said, yes, that it's not a forcing line that it will win a piece instantly or it will promote the pawn, but it's a long term advantage for White. I guess. What also will matter, apart from the space advantage and activity of uh, white, is the bishop. The bishop could be a really powerful piece. It's a long-range piece, and there's play on both flanks of the board. So the b6 knight will be a very slow piece to catch up with, for instance, a kingside initiative if white gets to push the pawns on the kingside. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, and, 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 and there you go, by the way, MVL plays rook f2. So the, they, both, they both completely misevaluated... Uh, apparently the position, uh, they both must have missed some sort of resource, and, and now apparently rook d8 is... This is the thing, like, when you watch Super GM games, you cannot just have your eyes glued uh, to, you know, to, to the eval bar, because then you're going to look at it, and you're going to be like, ha-ha, but I don't know why. Mm. Ha-ha, <laughs> but I, I can't explain it, you know. Wh yeah. Whoa, this I can't explain. Uh, Knight f7 hits both rooks, and now this is hanging. That I can't explain. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? So Hikaru just takes... Sacking the Rook and wins the pawn. So that leaves us with this position. Oh, apparently G4 is winning. Is it? Yes, because you need the Bishop to maintain defense of the of the E8 square. Oh, when he and found it. It's on the it. board, no. Ooh, and he found it. G4 is uh, is brutal. If you take it, what happens is white plays e7, and now rook f8 comes, and the bishop no longer defends the promotion square. 
That's what happened. And if Hikaru played bishop g6, then there would have been rook f6. And now again, your bishop has run out of town. Oh no. Oh no, this is not the start we want. This is not what we wanted for today for the first game. Of course, it's a four game match. So four games in total, this is only the first, but it's not yeah. pleasant. Tough, tough, tough. G4 is a nice find. I, I, I guess MVL just had a, had a bit of a feel for the position, but it's one mm. game. And uh, it, it happens. At the same time, where are the most practical chances for Hikaru to fight back? Uh, probably give up the bishop and then try to just consolidate around this pawn. If he can create a, a blockade like with a king and a knight and then win the e6 pawn, uh, it's mm -hmm. not lost at all. But then his only move to, to play is rook d5. Rook True. d5 is the only move. Yeah. So it will be an exchange up for wide, but it's not instantly winning. It's a really tough start for Hikaru, but yes, in a four game match, anything can still happen. And remember today is just the first match of the two. I've also been trying to clarify the match format because you guys have asked what happens if someone wins today, for instance, three to one and tomorrow loses two and a half, one and a half. Uh, it doesn't matter how many points you collected. What matters is who won the match. So if today one player wins, that's a win. Tomorrow loses the match, but with less points, it doesn't matter how many points were scored. It's a 1-1, and then we go to a playoff. The playoff will be the Blitz games, and if after the Blitz it's still a tie, then Armageddon. So it counts as separate mini-matches. There's only a playoff if both matches are drawn, that is 1-1. Wait, this is fascinating. Hikaru is sacrificing his second rook. He's going to play bishop, knight, and ultimately four pawns because he's going to lose his h-pawn. Wow. Uh, you think gonna... it's a better chance than the exchange down? Oh my god. Wait, bishop, knight, four, and, and two rooks and two pawns? Is this even winning? Like, think about it. How would you win this? If black just creates a defensive fortress, actually, how do you win this position? Because the thing is that the pawns cannot break through. They're not together. So if black plays c5, a5, the pawns will never make it through. If you play b6, what you need is to guard c7. So you'll put a knight on a6, king b7, and bishop on c6. How, do, how does the person ever break through? Actually, how does the person ever hope. break through? Yeah, that's our hope that how do you break through? Even if it's two exchanges down, but you are right. It could be a barrier that's almost unbreakable. The evaluation bar doesn't agree. It shows that, that white has to be winning. Right, but it, it also shows that because of um, because it, it doesn't understand fortresses. Like the, the computer has, um, I forget, I think it's called horizon effect uh, or something. It like, again, remember that the we all use different computers on different depths. So mine stops at a certain point and goes, yep, winning. And then a stronger computer goes, yep, yeah, prove it. And then this mm. computer goes, sorry, I, I can't really do that. I just kind of say things. Kind of like election fraud. Anyway, um, that's why MVL plays rook f7, uh, to put some pressure here and not let Hikaru just kind of move away. Let's see if it works. I would, I would love to believe in fortresses. Uh, Magnus Carlsen does not believe in fortresses and yet he tried to build one against Fabiano Carana in that game where he was supposed to get checkmated but it was impossible to see. That was at the World Championship match where the Norwegian supercomputer claimed uh, the mate, a very long line. But all in all, if the World Champion says he does not believe in fortresses, shall we, shall we say this is one of those exceptions where there is a fortress? I I don't know yet. Because the thing is, now if you play king c8, you lose in one move. So Hikaru plays h5, of course. So now the bishop and the pawn are glued, mm -hmm. and the bishop is glued to the knight. If MVL plays something like rook g7, threatening a mate, Hikaru will probably move his knight out. Or maybe... Yeah, move his knight out, yeah. Or even like c5, c6, and just try to slow crawl out of there. Wow, this is such a weird position. It's so unique. And I think we, we are struggling to have a grasp of it also for the fact that it's very rare to have this dynamic imbalance where it's two minor pieces versus two rooks. Normally, yeah, of course, the two rooks have to be stronger. But as you pointed out, Levy, where is the breaking point? Where is it where white can go and gobble up some pawns and create a pass pawn? Because 
only the rooks giving checks going back and forth will not win the game you can pin the knight for instance you can play well no you can't do it immediately but even if you could bring the rook to the d file mm -hmm. still you are not threatening anything you can bring the rook to e7 right now you could double rooks in the seventh and that's the dream position usually to have two rooks on the seventh but you are not threatening anything so how will white create a threat is the main question here I'm not going to lie, I have no idea. Like what's going to the game changer is going to be whether white can successfully bring in the king to cause serious problems. But if we look at the position, the king can only go to this side. Now, yeah. let's also not forget that king and rook, like let's say you sacrifice a rook for the bishop and the pawn, that's a draw. Knight and these four pawns is most likely going to be an, uh, a draw just because black has too many pawns. <laughs> in fact, if you're very unlucky and you end up in king and rook versus king knight and two pawns, you might lose. Uh mm -hmm. if you're really unlucky. But uh, how does MVL... Yeah, MVL's gonna have to bring his king, like... Or Hikaru's gonna have to do something crazy, but like B6 and King C8, King B7, how do you... How do you win? Yeah, this is gonna be a huge question. And another huge question is, can the world champion survive with the king on D2? Because he has gone for a king run. That king was on F1, knight oh my on God. E1, D2. Can he escape? Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, apparently Magnus is minus 2.6. He's just completely lost, according to... Uh, I saw somebody, so, someone wrote in the chat. Sh shout out to Google Blitz. If you, if you write something nice, maybe I'll say your name out loud. Oh, um, yes. The Norwegian supercomputer Sassy approves of that evaluation. Black is winning, but Anish still has to find the right moves. And here... It says that the best move for black is rook d to e8, and it's been played. Yeah, well, th that's the thing. Like, the position plays itself for Anish. Like, mm -hmm. Anish doesn't have the same complicated stuff we got going on here. He's just got to put rooks on open files, and at some point he has to play f6. Uh, I predict Magnus does something in it, like, just totally nuts. I actually think that, that, that Magnus will make a decisive mistake very soon. This, I mean, just look at this position. Like, what are you even... What are you even doing here? What are you even doing here? It looks terrible. I I wonder, I was gonna say, I wonder where it went wrong, but even earlier when he had to castle into that h takes g3 capture, yeah, the computer said easy, but for a human being, even if you are the world champion, it wasn't simple at all. He takes the pawn on h5. That's a very practical approach. At least try to collect some material if you are in such a difficult situation that the king is being targeted. I'm pretty sure black will just push the f pawn to chase that e5 knight away because that's the piece that's holding together the position. It's covering up the e5 so the d2 king is not too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the knight is chased away from e5, there's no more knight outpost. The e5 will be accessible for black's heavy pieces. I think this is this is close to being a like resignation after f6. F6 and oh the next the next one's a, a big haymaker. The queen's gonna come to h2. Oh, that's about to happen. The queen's gonna get in there, hit the rook, the, the pawn. The worst part about this position is when this rook comes down, the queen doesn't actually take the rook. Because you're protected. Everything in Giri's position plays very very, very well here. He has to put the game away. But, oh my, I, I'm not sure Magnus will ever play into Giri's Rogozin ever again. And if he does, he's not going to go for this line. That's, that's, that's all I have to say. Yeah, well, if he takes a look at it, that he did have an advantage after the opening moves because it was Anish who messed up first, but then Magnus messed up because it was totally not obvious that he had to castle into that kingside attack. Uh, it was a chaotic position and... Uh, I think Anish will, will draw first blood. He's about to win with the black pieces in a mini match where his next two games, well, next game is with the white pieces, but out of the last three, he has two games with the white pieces. Looking great for Anish. It is looking great. It is looking great. And I, but if anything, this just shows that, uh, that you know, whether you play with the white or the black pieces, um, as long as your preparation is good and you get good, good practical positions for yourself, life is easy. I mean, life is easy. You just you just got to play a few natural moves. Oh, it's happened. It's happened. MVL just sacrificed a rook for the knight. Oh, that's interesting. This could be the way to do it. Hmm. To sack the rook and completely shatter the structure. 
That might have been the only thing Hikaru could have been worried about, if anything. Mm -hmm. Now, objectively, this could still be holdable if you put the king on b6, and then the bishop on, like, this diagonal? That probably is it. But it's so hard to tell. And then... It, wait, it Anna, looks I, scary with the a-pawn. If the a-pawn falls, I feel like it's, it's gonna be troublesome. Can we keep it on the board? Well, there's... You know what the worst part is? What is it? The worst part is that... Let's say you get king and, and, and rook, like, over here. You win one of these pawns. The king comes to defend everything. Oh, but the thing is, you're not in time. You can't get your king to b6. You have to lose another pawn. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Wait, is MVL just a genius? Uh-oh. Is that it? He has won the pawn? Yeah, I was gonna... I mean, I was thinking, like, big picture, but if you take the pawn on a5, that could be something really serious. Maybe allowing this sacrifice wasn't wasn't good for Hikaru, but could he have done anything else, really, is the question. I'm not so sure. It's a tough one. Um, and it seemed that Hikaru was... He was just one move short to get the king to b6 and have everything guarded. Now without the a5 pawn, I find it difficult to believe that it could be holdable without that pawn stopping white's a3 pawn. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, if you preserve your h pawn and get it closer to the end and then put the bishop on g2, so basically keep the pawn and bishop always together, that will distract the rook or the king. So that's what's mm -hmm. happening now. Like, th they're distracted over there. I... God, this is this is stressful. This is stressful. I'm, I'm not sure. Also, Rajabov is winning. Is he? Uh, uh, my, what is this game, start? Game. <laughs> okay, I was like, is it... So we... No, all no, he these is. grandmasters are, of course, very strong, but he... there are favorites in matches, and it feels like the underdog, so oh. to say, underdogs are winning in the first game today. Rajabov is just completely winning. W Wesley's the guy getting attacked. The files opened up on the GNH, and one of the guys has a safer king. I mean, you got horsies. You got the horsies in the back, and you got the rooks coming down the G and the A. Uh, this, is, this looks awful. And look at this bishop, by the way. Oh, what a killer on B6. Sniper from B6 over there. Uh, did Giri blunder? I don't Speaking of which, think so. Has he? Oh, let's... his advantage is gone? Yes, his advantage is gone. I'm going to keep the Hikaru game up for a little bit. Uh, no, no, let, let, let's put the Giri game up because it, it is very crazy. The Hikaru game will be a longer end game. So let's put, uh, let, yeah, let's, let's put Hikaru and see what MVL can come up with. What on earth did Giri do? How did this happen? Magnus Houdini Carlsen? I don't get it. Oh, Giri took on e3 to trade queens. God, Giri! No. <laughs> Why does he do this? He insists on doing this. The lower... Guys, guys, when you have an attack... Anna, how many, how many beginners have you told not to trade queens when attacking? Everyone. Um, I hope you guys remember. Uh, Puck Champs coaching my viewers uh, when I coach my community. Uh, I believe Anish Giri knows it, but was he worried about something after Rook takes? Or maybe he doesn't even have to take the pawn just yet. What would well, be the best move here? Well, yeah, I mean, the move to find here is is, is kind of nutty. You have to find Bishop to e2. Uh, and and on and, and that what that does is it threatens Bishop f3 because of the pin, but it allows Queen c7, which kind of looks scary, first of all. And it also, you know, you pin yourself. And he had to, he had to find, like, that he's completely okay by allowing this check. He has to just basically realize that despite allowing that check, he's okay. But that's Anish. Anish plays the low-risk, practical approach, pawn up, uh, equal endgame with a more active rook, but now he might not win. He might not he win. Might he won't lose, lose, but he might not win. The thing is, if you miss a chance like this against Magnus Carlsen, he will punish you for it. It's a four-game match where if, Mag if Magnus has any chance, even a smaller advantage than this, he will obviously go for it. So this for the match for Anish Giri is going to, I think it will bite back that he didn't go for the riskier, but better option. Yeah, Bishop E2. And, and, and it's a question of, first of all, did he see the idea? And second of all, uh, did he, you know, if he saw it, he must have just misevaluated it because otherwise he would have played it. That's, that's how chess logic works. Did he go Bishop E2? Ah, oh, it's kind of risky. My coordination's bad. Let me go for this end game. I still have good chances. Yeah, that's chess, though. He had his one chance, and 
Magnus has this ability to put you in a position where you have to find the one move. And it's really hard, you know? It's not an easy one. Yeah, that's why he's the world champion. He he never ever gives up. He always wants to make it the most difficult possible for his opponent. So it was at some point, I think it was a minus six or over minus six advantage, which means materialized, it's over a rook advantage. If it was put on the board, Anish Giri's advantage was almost a full rook or more than a full rook of value. That's how good his position was. Yep. You could have given Magnus a rook to place somewhere in his territory. And, you know, uh, it's not exactly how it works because just yeah. the existence of the rook would then balance it even more. But yeah, minus six is nuts. And that just shows Anisha's preparation is uh, top tier and he's here to fight. That is what he's here to do. Okay, Hikaru still is on the um, on the bottom left board. Mm -hmm. And not too much has changed. Uh, he's really pushed his pawns, and MDL has walked his king. I'm I'm not extremely I'm 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 not extremely confident that this is a defendable position. But at the same time, I don't know how to win it. So I'm just gonna sit here and say words and not actually. I don't have to play the moves. But it just doesn't make sense, Anna. Right? Like too many pawn yeah. weaknesses somehow for Hikaru. I don't, yeah, I'm so sorry that the A pawn has disappeared. And yet, Hikaru's trying his best, of course, with the king on b5 and pushing c5. He, for now, has prevented my, um, MVL from promoting the pawn, from advancing that pass pawn that eventually will need to promote at some point on a8. So, for now, it does look like Hikaru really is building up a kind of a fortress, but it feels like it feels like this is not that fortress-like position anymore as much as we are trying to hold it of course yeah that's god what a, what a weird end game such insane high level chess today yeah insane high level chess uh apparently rajabov has blundered <laughs> well has he? Uh, no apparently not i mean unless he blundered like a move ago uh yeah apparently king d7 gave away advantage but these guys have a minute anna let's watch this game this is chaos. What is unfolding before our eyes? Queen, knight, bishop, queen, knight, knight, two rooks, four pawns, five pawns each. Kings just out in the open. Oh my. Oh my. Wait, is Rajabov's last move hanging a rook? Isn't that just knight takes rook? But I guess not because queen f5 and some sort of checkmate. Yeah, I guess so. And in the meantime, it's official that Anish Giri and Magnus Carlsen have drawn their first game. What an escape by the world champion, who also will be kicking himself for spoiling the advantage he was given out of the opening. So it was a really chaotic roller coaster game. Yeah, now, uh, oh, Queen D1. Okay, why is this completely lost? Uh, why is this completely lost? Queen H3, Queen H3, Bishop F2? Queen h3, king g1, some sort of bishop f2 sacrifice, king f2, queen h2. Yeah. I wouldn't put this out. Oh! Oh, computer is brutal. Computer just wants king f8. <laughs> computer just wants king f8. Very calm. King f8. Rook, rook has almost no squares, but g4. And after rook g4, f5. Rook oh my g5, God. then queen h4, trapping Oh, and he's the found rook. it, and he's found it. The, the, the rook is just trapped. It has no moves. Because you can't oh, yeah. ever move your f-pawn. He is going for it. Insane. Completely insane. King f8. Wow, what a find. Not a, not a crazy move at this level, really, because, guys, again, most forcing moves. Checks, captures, attacks. You have no good checks, you have no good captures. What do you attack that's worth the most? A rook with the king, which also attacks the knight. The rook has no moves. Boom. You guys are all top 10 in the world now. Look at that. King f8. Great move. What a game. What a game. What a start to the quarterfinals. We we saw Anish Giri struggling in the opening, then uh, Magnus making a mistake, Magnus in a lost position, but then Anish making a mistake, and it's a draw. Hikaru's game has been a really wide one with the two exchanges down, but almost fortress. Could, it could still be a draw. Hikaru is doing his best to fight for that half a point. And at the same time, Wesley So, who's supposed to be oh. um, the favorite in this match, he's going down too. As you said that, Ikaru resigned his game. Oh no. Um... And I think, let me, let me, uh, I'll just pull this up on the big screen. Yeah. Ikaru resigned because as I feared, his fortress is falling apart. Like, he, he cannot defend everything. So what's going to happen here is, let's say he plays bishop c2. 
he's gonna lose his h pawn once he loses his h pawn the two pass pawns on the c file uh they're too delicate like that's the problem y you need pawns everywhere or you need some sort of defensive fortress that um that holds and and, and really it came right here he was just a move short. Maybe what he should have done is played knight b7 to put the knight on a square where it wouldn't be compromised if it got captured. I think so. Like, that must be it. And then knight d6 and then, and then this and this. I'd love to ask him. Uh, we can't talk to him right now, so hopefully he, you know, he wins the rest of his games. Oh. Rajabov resigned. I, I mean, uh, Wesley resigned. Wesley, Rajabov has won. goodness me, yeah. if you tell me Rajabov <laughs> resigns in that winning position. Wow. Um, what the stars? So we have, out of the four matches, there are four matches in the quarterfinals. Two of them ended in a draw, but the draw between Kasa and Gary was absolutely crazy. We thought Anish Gary was going to win it. A minus six advantage. That's more than a rook of advantage. Uh, he didn't win it. Um, so the only two players to win is Maxime against Hikaru, unfortunately. But Hikaru will have three more games. So there's a lot of chances to fight back three of those games uh, out of the three games he has two games with the white pieces that uh, gives us even more confidence and as for Wesley so he went down against Timur Rajabov uh, not a good start for the teammate of Hikaru fellow American grandmaster and Olympic gold medalist um, yeah, Americans he... let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wait, some, uh, it's some early fight. It's early yes. in the state. I'm, I'm going to say it's the schedule, but we started every previous round too at this time. And uh, we know that the players adjusted their sleep pattern to the schedule. So you can't really blame the time, the starting time. No, no, of course. Uh, just, just a, a, a you know, it's a, it's a tough day of chess. Anna, let's take a break. I'm not sure exactly if uh, the schedule means that they begin in, in 13 minutes, because that seems kind of crazy if all the games end, you know, 30 minutes uh, before the top of the hour. Probably they will take a 10 minute break. That's what I would imagine. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just get word that that's actually. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to take a short break. Nepo and Aronian have actually already started. So we'll take a Ooh. quick break. And then, we'll, unless you don't want to, in which case. <laughs> uh, up to you. Um, I'm good for now, but you let me know. You're the producer. Okay. I, 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 will, I will get the word of what the right thing to do is. Yes. Uh, we're supposed to do these things behind the scene, but um, okay. <laughs> we just say it out loud. Yes. Hello, team. <laughs> Short break. Short break. I've been instructed, and then we will be right back with all the games. Back from break, it's the Skilling Open, it is the quarterfinal knockouts, and it's the second game between Jan Nepomnici and Levan Arnjan. Uh, and Anna, we, we missed some of the opening moves because they just kind of got going since they drew so fast, but someone's already losing. Uh, excuse me, I thought we missed the opening moves. I didn't know that your follow-up line was going to be someone is already losing. Please tell me it's MVL. Well... It, it's, I don't think their game has begun just yet, but, oh. uh, I was uh, hoping, I was hoping. And, and MVL is such a nice guy. Obviously here, everyone is highly respected, super strong grandmasters, but we are rooting for Hikaru because we are team Hikaru. So whatever you guys say about being biased, we are on Hikaru's channel. We are team Hikaru and we're going to make sure that Hikaru makes it to the finals. That's our task. So send the flower power uh, back to you, Levy, who is losing? Well, one guy has a queen and the other guy doesn't. Uh, that's the high-level commentary we come here for. Um, <laughs> if you actually count material, Aranyan has a one-point advantage. The problem is that his knight is... Um, it's like, you know, you're driving on a highway and it's just walking alongside the road. It's not supposed to be there. Uh, he's also very dangerously close to getting checkmated. Uh, and the difference in, in the bishops also is drastic. One is staring at a pawn, and the other is kind of staring at the king. Uh, but question is how will he you know that's it how will how will he go lights out here how will he go i don't know out? how to make that sound i was gonna quote you but i just don't know how to do that sound no this is uh th this this looks this looks very very bad uh for levon but you know what's surprising about this game nepo is down eight minutes how how did that happen 
Okay, wait a second. I'm very confused because it's one thing that Levon Aronian has sacrificed his queen for apparently no reason, or at least we don't understand why he did that. And the second is what you're saying, even more mysterious. How is it possible? Yeah, how is it possible that Yan Yapomyashi has used 10 minutes already? Do you guys you guys know who Yan Yapomyashi is, right? The super grandmasters from, from from Russia who never ever spends time. Never ever. Doesn't matter if he's winning or losing. He is the speediest of players, even in rapid chess. He blitzes out his moves. Has he like taken a snack break? Um, was he in the bathroom? What happened to Nepomnashi? I I'm not I, I can't I, I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not certain. I am certain that no other game has begun. These guys uh these guys are starting first. Every other game ended kind of around the same time. I got Geary Carlson. I'm gonna put Hikaru MVL second game uh on the bottom left chat. When you see movement, you know what to do. You gotta you gotta yell really loud. Uh and then I will switch it over to the big board for now. Oh, what Anna, <laughs> Anna, what's the Tell best me. move here for Jan? How do we? The best move here for Jan yeah. is, ladies and gentlemen, oh, it's beautiful. Just... Because after c5, you don't want that bishop on b6 to ever be active, and you can just stop that pawn and say, you will never ever have a diagonal. Is that the yeah, move? Yeah, that is the move, Anna. When I see c5, I see, you know, c4. Mm -hmm. And that's it. The bishop's just bye bye, bye bye bishop. And if the bishop goes to a five, you lose the c five pawn. I think Nepo's gonna take a, a Nepo's gonna be done with two games before the other guys even play the second game. <laughs> this guy, this guy's got like a like a you know underground poker game he's got to get to, and he's just like okay. I mean, I need to play very fast, and then I have to go. You know, he also speaks very fast. He just does everything very fast. He does. Um, I heard that uh, Peter Swidler, who unfortunately was knocked out of the tournament, is currently playing Hearthstone. So maybe Jan just wants to join in and doesn't want to miss out on that Hearthstone game that Peter is currently engaged in. Oh, there goes the rescue operation for the bishop. C6 has been played. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is, again, that you're just going to lose your pawns. And actually, one thing that Nepo can do here is just push his pawns because he has three of them, uh, whereas Levon only has one. So you just push your pawns, make sure your king is protected, and I think you just very easily win. It's gonna maybe ten more moves, and then the game is gonna yeah. be over. Can we take a a quick look again at that moment when Aronian decided to give up the queen? What was the reasoning behind? What is it that he missed? Yeah, he took on c three to open his bishop, knight e five, queen g three. He just sacked it, completely, completely, completely uh, unprovoked. Completely unprovoked. Well, the, the, the struggle here is rook f4, maybe rook d3. Rook d3. Um, and the queen is under attack and so is the rook. But he has queen f8. Did he just miss queen f8? I don't know. Maybe. Queen f8 moves the queen and defends the rook. And you solve two birds, one stone. And so... that seems to be just good enough for black. Yeah, I mean, it's... It, it's still a game, but uh, you don't lose a queen. And instead, he said, I don't need no damn queen. But the problem is that now he just, he just, he's just lost. There's, there, there's nothing more to this position. He's just completely lost. Like, this position is different than, for example, the position that Geary had to play. And he will have to play again now. I think their game has just started, as you call their names. Yes, Magnus uh, and Giri are, are playing their second game. We will pull that up. Uh, this is not the same kind of quality of, of, of game, because Giri had to find one very specific idea. Nepo has to push some pawns. Chat, mm -hmm. you could win that game. Literally. Even, like, deliberately or, or by accident. If you just push your pawns there, probably you just win. And that's what we're going to see happen. Okay. Anna, you did commentary on the last World Championship. You saw this opening a lot played against Magnus. It's a very popular run, the Rosalimo, because, uh, I, I mean, partially, I guess, the reason was that uh, Team Fabiano wasn't mainly focusing on the Sicilian defense, at least not uh, second night C6. So they decided to go for the Rosalimo before they would enter the open Sicilian. They took a couple of games. Uh, the Rosalimo was very trending in London until Team Fabiano 
backstage organized um, what shall be their plan B against the or the open Sicilian I mean the open Sicilian from White's perspective what is it that they should expect there the Sveshnikov and which lines it was a really theoretical battle but yes I think the world championship in London made the Rosalimo um, bloom again it has always been one of my favorite openings because it's not as sharp it's not that theoretical you basically if you are a club player if you are um, a beginner in the intermediate at any level if you understand the idea the strategy you can just learn oh i take on c6 and i push d3 um, oftentimes i castle i want to do this knight maneuver so just by knowing the basic uh, setup and the basic ideas i think you can get away with this opening that's why i like it uh, on the top level, though, that's not the reason why they play it. It's not why they play the Rostolima, because it's easy to memorize the setup. Yeah, there's actually a lot of different setups Black can, Black can employ, some even better than others. Uh, but the point is really to just avoid the defenses in the open Sicilian, which will come after knight c6. Magnus Carlsen plays uh, the Sveshnikov, which is one of the most uh, theoretically discussed openings. The prep there runs 30 moves deep, and very, very easily, if you memorize all of it, it's not so easy, but he's, you know, arguably the greatest player of all time. So for him, it's easy. Uh, you neutralize white. It's a quick half a point. You don't need to think. So the player started playing bishop b5, and uh, almost every titled player I know plays bishop b5 against knight c6. Every mm -hmm. single one. They don't. They don't go into that that stuff with d4 yeah. anymore. Yeah. Now it's even more popular. Ever since that World Championship match, I think it it has started trending again. Um, we shall see how. Anish uh, has prepared for today. He still has over 15 minutes. Of course, it was very likely that Magnus would go for this Sicilian and the Rossolimo is what Anish prepared. Um, Anish and his team, obviously all of these top grandmasters work with a team of seconds. Uh, they are normally called seconds when it's another player, titled player or not, but someone who is helping you with your preparation, usually heavily, um, heavily using engine uh, evaluation engine lines because the computer nowadays can play better than humans so many of the seconds if not everyone I guess every second uses computer analysis and tells you for the next day what is it that you need to play and then you just need to memorize all the lines uh, 30 pages of of analysis easy I was just pulling up uh, the game that Hikaru and MVL have started um so Hikaru plays into the Grunfeld, which is MVL's pet line, so you know what's coming. Uh, and now Bishop F4. So this is kind of a it's one of one of the many, many, many options. But MVL takes on C4, which I I guess is is a thing. And then you're supposed to kind of go for C5. Just in general, you're supposed to go for C5 in these positions. Yeah. Uh, but he goes knight d7. What? I've what? Okay, well, he's the Grunfeld god. I've never seen this, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, if MVL is playing this and still above 15 minutes, it's quite an, a, quite an assurance that he knows what he's doing. Him and Peter Swidler are considered the biggest experts of the Grunfeld defense. Yesterday, we were asked, by the way, by a couple of you, what is the Grunfeld defense? Mm -hmm. So we could show which starting moves sure. makes it the Grunfeld defense. So D4... Knight f6, c4. Now at this point, black can play a, a plethora of pawn moves. c5, d6, e6, g6, b6. I'm not counting the a and h pawns, although you can also go with those. Um, and that leads to a lot of different things. g6 either goes for a king's Indian defense. Uh, oh, by the way, e5, which is the Budapest gambit. I play that. I should have probably said that. Hmm. Um, so g6 leads either to king's Indian... Or the Grunfeld. And Grunfeld is essentially you strike back in the center right away. Uh, and it's probably a it's probably top two most complex openings in terms of theory, engines, probably only second to the Nidorf. Would you say that's fair? Because I feel like the Rue Lopez, the Spanish, yeah. is just vast. I don't know about complex, but I vast. You don't always need the engine. That's just my exactly. opinion. Exactly. Yeah, uh, because uh, there's a difference between complex and complex and sharp lines, as you said. I, I do agree with you that the Nidorf uh, against e4, so in the Sicilian defense, the Nidorf variation, and against d4, the Grunfeld defense, 
are two of the, the sharpest openings and, and most theoretical. You need to know it by heart if you don't want to lose straight out of the opening. And Maxime plays both. He loves the Nidorf. He loves the Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. He is a very theoretical guy. And you are right, Lavi, that D takes C4 is a really rare move. After E3, I have over 5,000 games in the mm -hmm. database. And after D takes C4, out of the 5,000, D takes C4... Not even 245 games. We are going wow. down from 5,000 to 45. This is how how much of a sideline he's playing. And after Knight BD7, we are down to 25. This is a unique position. I guess Envia decided to go for this for today against Hikaru to oh. surprise him. You play sidelines to surprise your opponent. It's not the main line. It's not the most theoretical one. And hoping that Hikaru doesn't have this fully analyzed. He, well, evidently from the time he's spending, he definitely doesn't. That this is like that's like what less than, I my that's less than, I don't know the number. <laughs> I'm trying to crunch it as I'm speaking, and I and I can't <laughs> chat. What is it, Anna? You said forty five out of five thousand. Yes, and currently it's twenty five. So we are, we are going down to a very low number. Go. It's like point five percent or something. Something like one percent. Oh, point five. Oh, I got it. Oh, let's go. Let's go. So it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, this, and Anna, here's a question. Super GM games or no Super GM games? Um, not many Super GM games. Uh, no, if any. There are Grandmaster games, Super GMs. Do I see any? We're, chat, um, you're witnessing Ivan mystery. Chuk, Ivan Chuk. <gasps> Wait a second. I did not see many Super GM games on the list, but one of the games is Vasily Ivanchuk with the black pieces against a young grandmaster called Hikaru Nakamura back in 2011. So Maxim oh, has prepared from Hikaru's game at the Tal Memorial in Moscow in 2011. That was a win for Ivanchuk. So this might bring back some bad memories. I really, yeah, wow. I wonder if uh, Hikaru, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm too scared to, because they, they remember a lot of games, but they can't remember every single game they play. So I wonder if Hikaru is remembering that game. I really wonder. But of course, analysis has changed so much. Yeah, wow. I think he does. I think especially when it's uh, the major tournament. So the Moscow Open, the Tal Memorial, sorry, not Moscow Open, but Tal Memorial in Moscow um, is another super, super Grandmaster tournament where I'm pretty sure he can recall all of his games move by move. But the question is that after that game, for sure, he went back to, to check what is it that he had to do? Because you normally don't lose with the white pieces against the Grunfeld. It's not a winning opening. So will he remember what he analyzed back in 2011 and has he revised it since yeah i i wonder and and how have we followed the path of that game so far what's what's the status uh, we have except for the fact that after e3 so wait no no um sorry the move order was different but the position is still the same cd4 it's all the same yes mm -hmm. um let me see. Wait, do we have CD4? No, we don't. I thought we had, but after Knight BD7, uh, let me compare because now I only I need to see. This was a different move order, so I'm uh, confused. Let me check um, how it compares with the different line. Okay, after Knight BD7, we deviate because Hikaru in that game played Knight to B5 and not Knight F3. Knight b5 instead of knight f3? Oh, oh, of course, yeah. to, to hit c7. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I was like, yeah. knight b5? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah yes, it yes. was c6, bishop c7, queen e8, and then he retreated the knight. Yeah, and then, yeah, Ivanchu just stormed forward. Yeah, I'm seeing the game. Um, okay. Okay, so this is completely unique territory. This doesn't look like it's supposed to make sense. It just seems like Black is attacking the center without actually finishing development, but he's going to mm -hmm. rely on... Oh, that's the most critical move! Hikaru played the best move. He doesn't yeah, take he... back and he goes knight b5 instead. So this is not the same as his game against no. Ivan Chuk. This is a completely different knight b5. There's no more c-pawn that can push c6. There's no more c-pawn. It's on d4. So a temporary pawn sacrifice 
well, with the idea. Let, let's see what happens. Uh, Levy, can you present what would happen if Black decides to gobble up the E3 pawn as well? Yeah, 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 sure. Um, it's actually very cool. You, uh, I don't know if this is Hikaru's idea, but you play knight g5 and you sacrifice a third pawn. And if we get ef2 with check, rook f2, and there's a moment here where black looks at you and goes, I'm up two pawns. And you look at black and go, so? And now black has to make a move, and it's basically impossible because of the pressure on f7 and c7. And black just can't make a single move. For example, let's say black plays like e5 to attack the bishop, bishop f7. Mm -hmm. Rook f7, take, take, some queen b3, and it's, it's, it's done. Just absolutely done. Um, you can't defend C the position. I just wanted to add that after c takes d4, so c takes d4 still happened in sixth game, but no mm -hmm. one ever has played knight to b5 in and that position. Move. And it's the best move. Do you think... Hikaru analyzed it back then and recalled it, even if it took him quite some time? Or do you think it was an over-the-board inspiration? Because in both cases, it's brilliant. He's a genius. Uh, it's not It's not a... Comp well, if he plays DE3, Knight G5, if he invented that over the board, uh, then then yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably have to call, like, you know, the, the Nobel Prize Committee and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, ha we'll have to figure something out. Uh, get, get him a name engraved on like a wing of the MIT University or something. But um, if he's just come up with knight b5, like by thinking a few minutes with no actual, uh, con you know, concepts or, or looking at any sort of analysis, it's not the most insane move because it's actually, it's a very direct threat. It's kind of like Hikaru's thinking, how do I punish MVL for playing this knight d7 thing? Mm -hmm. Now, if MVL here plays knight to e8, well, he's admitted his position is... Terrible. He's admitted it's all yeah. a bluff because you can't go to c7 now. Then Hikaru will take back on d4. And are you seriously going to tell me that this is okay for black? All of black's pieces are on the second and first rank. Except yeah. this guy. It's so. crazy to think that MVL goes for this as a surprise of uh, of beat line. And it's it seemed to have been working. At least it made Hikaru think for a long time. And Hikaru did have a game in this line but back in 2011, so almost a decade ago. And whether he remembered his analysis or he invented this over the board, he found the very best continuation and now Maxim could be in trouble. Let's let's put it this way. It, the Grunfeld is in many ways like a high-speed race. Uh, and if you mess around and move the wheel slightly wrong, you can crash. So if you try to make a shortcut, which is kind of what he tries to do with like DC4, Knight D7, surprising Hikaru. Problem is, if the guy figures it all out, you're in some serious trouble. And MVL's in, make no mistake, he, he's in some very serious trouble here. So we'll, we'll see what he comes up with. But obviously, he's he's up 1-0. Uh, so he, he is feeling pretty good. Let's see if he decides to uh, kind of uh, call Hikaru's bluff with DE3. Or if he says, okay, yeah, my position's kind of bad. I'm going to play Knight E8 after all. Um... Bottom, what's going on in a Magnus game? I'm yeah, we need to take a look at that one. So that was a Rossolimo, much like in the World Championship in London. Anish Giri goes for the same opening that Fabiano applied against Magnus. B5 now to chase away the knight. And Rook A8 looks very solid to me. Magnus did something so funny in the opening. So after E5, Giri played A4, A5, which to the uninitiated basically looks like uh, he's uh, he's done with the game. Like some of my scholastic students at five and six, when they would be done with the lesson, they would just like pick up the piece that's closest to their hand and it would be the A pawn and then they would move it down the side of the board. And in their head, they're thinking they won't notice. I'm going to sneak in and I'm going to take everything. Giri doesn't, is not doing that. He's not letting the B pawn forward. Uh, and if takes, he's going to have the open rook. That's what he's trying to do here. Mm -hmm. um, but then knight h5 and a... Only, only Magnus can play like this. Just like, what is, what, what even is knight h5? Can, can you please explain to me or the viewers or why knight h5? Uh, that's a great question, Levy. I did not expect that move. And I wonder if that was uh, 
again, an over the board inspiration or was it still Magnus's preparation? Remember, he prepared for that world championship match more than two days. That was probably most of the year of his team spent on the Sicilian, um, including the Rossolimo, obviously, the Sveshnikov and the Rossolimo, what they had to be looking at. So, yeah, it could be his preparation. At the same time, it looks so strange. <laughs> It does, and people are saying it's to go F5, and I don't disagree with you. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I yeah. don't disagree that it's to go F5, except he literally... He never played that move, so I guess it was to go Knight F4? And to just trade the Knight off at some point? Maybe in the future yeah. he will go F5? And we'll what's see. strange about it is the move order too. So it's one thing to go for knight h5, knight f4, but before you go for knight maneuvers like that, you need to castle that's mm -hmm. priority numero uno so he needs to develop the bishop he needs to castle and then go knight h5 knight f4 if that's the plan what's interesting is that he starts with knight h5 then moves the bishop and then castle so why the urgency did he prevent something that white could have played if it was a different move order i'm not sure maybe it's the fact that anish can go for f4 Actually, in, in many ways... Oh, that might have been it, actually. It, it could have been like to, to fight for the F4 square. Uh, because mm. now if you don't go there, I will play F4 myself. So, mm. yeah, th th this, this simplification... N now, Anish is basically just going for a positional advantage where he will go for the C5 pawn. Apparently in this position, Magnus has to sack the pawn. He has to play Rook A2, Bishop takes, and then move his Bishop out here. I'm sorry, what if I just go back? Computer, what is wrong with you? Do we just repeat moves or something? I don't... Okay, I won't question... Many won't... questions. Of course, uh, I'm taking, in the meantime, a quick look at the database because I was really curious if this knight h5 ever never. happened. Never? But no, yeah, never. well, even even the earlier position on move 7, knight f6, I don't have any games for that already, so... So, you're telling me that, that Magnus creates new theory on move seven in a in an opening that's probably been played like 5,000 times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Anish contributed because, yeah, even, how is it, how is it possible? Where are the games? So on move five, D3, we have about 5,000 games again. Queen C7 narrows it down to 35. <laughs> they, said they just keep losing the games. Uh, I mean, they keep uh, um, narrowing down from then on. Yeah, it's it's so amusing to see such an such a traditional classical opening as the Rossolimo and on move seven, it's a position that according to my database we have never ever seen in chess history. MVL blundered. Apparently MVL Whoa. has made a massive mistake. Uh he thought for a while and he's immediately losing now. What? So wait a second, he kind of played exactly the line that you said, is that? Oh no, well, he played... No, no, MVL played knight h5, so he did not go for knight e8. MVL oh. said, I don't, give yeah. a, I don't give a damn about no bishop c7. Roll up on me, see what happens. And Hikaru says, okay. <laughs> like, okay. I, so I don't know what MVL thinks he has here. Uh, what is today with all these knight h5s? Everyone feels like there's a magna drawing the horsey to the h5 square. Inspired by Magnus Carlsen, he plays the same move, but this looks like a disaster. It's equal material. The queen is stuck on e8. Black is way behind in development. Uh, I don't get it. I also don't get it. I think I think MVL maybe wants to move his knight and then develop his bishop, but here's the problem if you play knight b6. Here's the problem if you play knight b6. Uh, I just take, then I play knight c7, because I forced your queen to go to that square. Mm -hmm. So you can't play knight b6. So what happens if you play knight f6? I can't take you if you go to f6. Okay, great. Uh, he made a move, by the way. What did he play? Bishop? h6, uh, with the one move threat of uh, capturing the rook, but I think Hikaru will be happy rook. moving it to the third rank, and then rook. it can swing over to the king side eventually at some point, isn't it? Isn't it just an easy move to counter this with rook c3? This reminds me, like, again, I, I taught a lot of scholastics. So my students yeah. would, like, get out of the opening, and then they would play these one-move attacking moves. And I would be like, why'd you go bishop h6? And they'd be like, well, because I'm attacking his rook. I'd be like, you're not wrong. 
He took. He does he's have a, the rook. <laughs> he's I don't, I don't give a damn about no bishop. Take c1. Let's because go. Because if the Take rook it. is taken, he's trapping the queen. Is that what he wants? Ninety no. six. No, I think he's just gonna play oh, queen c1, queen back. c6. He's just gonna play we'll queen c1. Take it back. Exchange, exchange, sacrifice because the threat is knight d6 trapping the queen. Okay, I respect it, but I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a little bit unnecessary. A little bit. Just rook c3. I would play. This is like Hikaru when he streams, and he's gonna be like, "Well, I have, you know, I, I have." He played ninety six. He, he did. Okay, so he's going for the queen. He's going for the queen. But Hikaru would say, "Oh, let's just play like Dania. Let's just play like Dania. I'm gonna play rook e1 and sack the. I'm gonna sack the juicer. Let's just play like Dania." But rook c3 was totally fine. Rook c3 was totally fine. So he's he's won the queen now. Um, and what is the position, Anna? He has queen versus two rooks, but very active pieces. Yeah, black is still way behind in development. So normally two rooks would compensate for the queen, but here the c8 bishop and the a8 rook are still stuck, meaning that white has to have an advantage here. How much of an advantage will be the question for the next couple of moves? Because black, if white doesn't have anything concrete within the next few moves, black will eventually find time to develop. So let's see what do we have. He will, he will. So when the bishop came to h6, <laughs> like I said, I was making the joke that like, you know, my students do this. They, they use what they have. Maybe they won't see the rook. And it's like, okay, well, what if they just move the rook? I don't know. You know, uh, I'll figure yeah. it out after that. Yeah, like rook c3. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoops. Rook c3. What? What is happening there? The bishop was like demanding to move. My like mouse was glitching. What if Hikaru had played rook c rook c3 instead of rook to e1? What was he so afraid of? Yeah, maybe he just thought this was the most straightforward because it looks great. Honestly, his position, it's a queen versus two rooks. But as you said, black is undeveloped, so it has to be really good for him. But yes, what we did not understand is what was MVL's profound idea after, let's say, we move the rook and then go rook e1, knight d6. So it could have still been the th same threat to move later. <laughs> what was MVL's profound idea? <laughs> Um, I mean, I assume he had one. You don't was, just go bishop a6, do you? I know. That was, that was just such beautifully veiled sarcasm, Anna. I love it. <laughs> um, Hikaru should take the knight because it's very active and then play knight g5 here, just going very directly for f7. Uh, that is just winning on the spot. So bishop b6, knight g5, uh, and then you just chop. And uh, black is not in time here to defend stuff. Uh, but let's see what Hikaru comes up with. Uh, he should not trade his, this bishop. He should trade this bishop, but he shouldn't trade the bishop on c4. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's on the board. We got a roar in the chat. Thirty-one thousand combined, or just on Hikaru's? What's 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 going on here? What's with the view count, chat? Y'all feeling good? Thank you so much for being here. Look at the flower power. I love the copy pass stuff that they keep sending your energy. Hikaru's way because he lost the first game. It's a mini match today and tomorrow. Well, he lost the first game. He needs to bounce back in this game. Looking great. Looking great with that attack over F7. But we appreciate your support and we need your support. Keep going. Yeah, this is kind of the basic uh, weak square concept. Like when, when, when the game of chess begins, the F7 square is the only weak square near the king. And later in the game, the better you get at, at these kind of tactical patterns. Now we're going to see the problem. So if bishop e6, Anna... Sorry, I was busy spamming. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's 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 part of the job. You don't get paid unless you spam. I haven't spammed for three days. I, I no no money has oh, hit my no. bank account. So maybe. Um. So let's 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 be instructive here. Which way should we take? Chat. Would you take this bishop with the knight or the bishop? You could also just spam flowers. You gotta take it. You gotta take it with the bishop. Because when they take back, then the queen goes push and gets into c7, and now the house collapses. But MVL plays knight a, a rook e7. Wait, can't we just take anyway? It looks like we should be able to take it regardless. To take... And like... I want to take and then... Ah, but... Can we take... Is it good to take? Let's try to calculate it. If knight takes f7, rook takes f7, we are not in a hurry or are we in a hurry to take that rook? I was thinking whether it makes sense to just play queen 
Um, but e3. we cannot bring the queen. Yeah, it, it would take two moves to attack the rook, so probably it's too slow. If we immediately take the rook after bishop takes, king takes, we do have a check on c7 that looks really attractive. That that could be it. It could be the fact that in this position we just feast on the pawns. Uh huh. And, and it's the gonna deep be... pawn. Yeah. If we if we get to capture the d pawn, we have a d4 pass pawn. That looks brilliant. Yeah, the problem with these positions is that oftentimes computers completely misunderstand uh, engine, uh, sorry, um, positional imbalance when it's like rook in three pieces versus queen in like two pawns. Uh, because again, it doesn't sense that there's a fortress. Whereas here, there very well might not be a fortress because of how many pawns are on the board. But black can coordinate the pieces in a certain way, and then it's going to be very tough for Hikaru to win. And I feel like it's very difficult, pra like, Practically speaking, to just give away all your pieces and leave yourself with a queen. But let's see what Hikaru True. can do. Yes, because it could feel like it's too close to uh, to not be winning. Um, especially since then Black can finally activate his pieces. So it's a queen versus a rook, a bishop, and a knight. If you add up those pieces, that would be enough compensation for the queen. You all know, right? The value of the pieces. A rook is five, a bishop is three, a knight is three. So you end up... 5 plus 3 plus 3, that's more than a queen. But the queen here is so powerful and black species are undeveloped and not coordinating. That's the reason why here the queen is way more powerful than those three pieces combined. Absolutely perfectly stated. I was browsing around uh, the catalog of games. Uh, well, big news from... Uh, from from kind of ground control is that Jan Nepomnici has defeated uh, Levon and Jan, uh, as, as it was to happen. Uh, all the pawns have disappeared from the king side, but let's actually see if that's how he won the game by pushing them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what do you know? It was. He literally pushed those pawns. Uh, Mr. Gotham strikes again, and, and he had to get rid of some of the pawns to promote another queen, but this endgame is totally winning for white. Nice game, and Nepo takes a one-game lead in the matchup of the Jans. One guy's name starts with Jan, and one guy's name end with it, and they have to, you know, fight it out. Exactly. He did fight it out with Jan Christoph Duda in a very successful way, and now he's trying to do the same against the Armenian number one, who celebrated his qualification to the quarterfinals by appearing on the interview, uh, on, on first on his webcam and then attending the interview with his dog Ponchik in his arms. Ponchik is famous from Aronian's Twitter. If you guys are not following Levon Aronian, uh, you're missing out on all the Ponchik photoshops. Yeah, Ponchik is what my grandma would call my little brother. Really? So yeah, so it's kind of funny. Like I'm, I'm Levy. And my little brother is Leo because my my mom uh, she she likes lions and actually like <laughs> like I think Leo almost was a Leo but he's not like zodiac sign wise, so technically our name doesn't quite translate to the same in Russian. So my grandparents uh -huh. didn't know what to call him because they had a nickname for me, so they started calling him Ponchik, which is like a sweet bun. It's like a yeah, it's oh. like some sort of yeah. So he's he's Ponchik. Yeah, uh, your so mother is saying too. It's like a donut. I didn't know that's yes. that's food. Ponchik. Well, you should definitely, you said follow on Twitter or Instagram? I think actually both. I, I do recommend mm. Levon Aronian social media in general, Twitter and Instagram. Um, he showed me on his phone how he does those brilliant photoshops because what he usually does with his uh, dog, Ponchik, is to take a photograph of other chess grandmasters and place the dog's face on the player. So he ah. has some brilliant photoshops. I don't know if there are any recent ones, but he used to do that. He used to do that re religiously from his phone. He has an app to do that Photoshop on his phone. Wow. Okay, well. Um... Oh, but wait a second. Well, I, I need to ask you a very important question because mm -hmm. yesterday was the day of important questions. Um, Hikaru, what's your favorite flower? Hikaru, how many pairs of socks do you own? And I was instructed that I need to ask Levy what his grandparents' nickname was for Levy. Levy, your nickname? Uh, they would call me Lev Tigrovich, which is Lion Tigerovich. 
Uh, that, that's what my grandma would call me. I don't think she ever called me something like Sweet Bun, but because my name, like, Lev is like, it, it's Lion, so she would call me, li li yeah, like, Lion Tiger Ovich. <laughs> nice. Now that I think about it, that's actually really funny. I used to always be like, ah, yeah, 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 she's saying, she's saying nickname, and then now that I'm, like, translating it, uh, yeah, that, that's what they call me. So she would, like, go, like, Lev Tigrovich, and then she would... Oh, that's actually, yeah, man, grandparents' nicknames are, uh, are, are on point. Uh, and so, like, my grandfather is Solomon, uh, and you can, you can translate that in Hebrew to, like, uh, Shlomo, that's, that would be the, that would be the translation, uh -huh. um, and so, I think his nickname is also, you just add Ovich. In Russian, you can add Ovich to anything, so I think he's, I think he's, uh, Shl Shlomovich, or, like, some, 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 something along those lines. Uh, yeah, slow motion, guys, yes. So, Anna Ovich, Anna Ru Rudolfovich, there you go, now you're, now you're Russian. Chat, add an Ovich to your name and... You're, you're yeah, so I want to see. I want to see everyone's Ochestva. How would your Russian name sound? Uh, but your nickname—that's that's hilarious. The the lion tiger Ovich. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sounds a lot better in Russian. Uh, Hikaru didn't go for the take on f7. He's choosing not to give up his two pieces. He's choosing to keep his bishop. I like that a lot because this knight is terrible. The bishop on c4 is chef's kiss. You're gonna put it on b3 and it's gonna be amazing. Uh, and g4 now. But one thing, Anna, that Hikoru, I don't know if he missed, but on rook e7, he could have taken with the bishop. Mm -hmm. And then if rook f7, isn't there queen c4? So you really? just repin the rook with the knight, and aren't you just winning? So I think he could have actually just taken the pawn for free. Oh. Now, black wouldn't have taken. He would have moved this king. And then the game yeah. would have went on after bishop f7. Hmm. Um, but, uh, okay, he chooses this. He chooses this. It still is very promising and it's so needed. This game is so needed after the first round, which didn't go exactly the way we hoped for. Um, what was the mistake in this game for MBL? It's a similar situation actually than what happened to Hikaru. The opening itself wasn't an easy one to get out of. So there are opening lines that are more positional, uh, slow, slow paced and their mistakes aren't that pricey, but in sharp, complex variations, one sidestep, one inaccuracy, and mm -hmm. you probably are in trouble. And MVL has a minute. Uh, he, he, he is very, very, very much lost here. Very much. Hikaru has played this very, very well. Uh, D5 is a good move. Mm -hmm. D5 is a good move. You, you can potentially just sack the bishop, but that's only good if black takes. Because the point is that you check and then you win. Uh, MVL here has a very nasty trap, rook to a5, pinning mm -hmm. the bishop to the queen, and then it's lights out for white's advantage. So don't go bishop, uh, don't go bishop d5, Hikaru. Don't do that. Don't. Please don't. More flower power. More flower power, guys. Flower power. A beautiful names. Thank you for letting us know what would your Russian name be like. I like it a lot. One thing here that's lurking is bishop d3 and queen h6. So, for example, bishop d3, uh, queen h6 will come. If bishop d3, knight f6, because the knight is hanging, you have queen h6 with a threat of g5, removing the defender of h7. And that actually looks terribly annoying. But, what? okay, th th there we go. So, I will stop talking now. It happened. <laughs> now, chat will go GM Levy, and I will feel good, good about myself. Yes, please do so. Please do, uh, do say that. Um, and just a very important answer to a very important question. Who's the grandmaster who does the dog photoshops in case you missed it? Because I saw it in the chat being as Levon Aronian, who lost his game against Jan Yapamish. So I'm hoping that his dog, the company of his dog, will help him get that confidence boost back because he needs to bounce back in the remaining two rapid games against Jan Yapamish. Other breaking news. Breaking news, Anna. I have just hit 20,000 Twitter followers. Look at you. Well I done. I know it's relevant to the games. I know. <laughs> I know. And, 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 and we well, will focus on these games, but let's go. 20K. It's, listen, I have been memeing my butt off on Twitter. I am everywhere. All right? <laughs> I'm on Slate. I'm on MMA. I'm on chess. We we on that social media grind. Um, I'm not posting uh, shirtless pictures of myself with fireball on my body that's what ludwig did but maybe we will get there if if that sponsorship is available so 
Um, also, why didn't Hikaru play Queen H6? Did I miss Great something? Great question. Great question, Levian. Go and follow uh, Gotham Chess on Twitter. If that call to action wasn't wasn't already convincing enough, Levy is on full social media grind, both on his Twitter and his Instagram. No, no, no. Let's let, one at a time. One at a time, guys. One at a time. <laughs> okay, Twitter <all> right? today. Twitter. <laughs> Yes, today Twitter. Uh, today we're gonna try to push again for Anna to hit uh, 70k. I asked what her goal was before this coverage. She was like, "I want to hit 60k on Twitch." I was like, "Are you nuts?" Anna's like buying treasury bonds out here. She was like a thousand away. It's a nine-day tournament. I was like, "No, we're gonna we're gonna hit 70." That's what we're gonna do. That's the next. We are plug, at 63, but... so it's, it's still far. You're you're very optimistic, Levy, that people like the content we do. What if they don't like us? What if they are here? Because um, what could be no, here, no, no, the no, good no, content? No. Um, there's like, Anna, you're, there, there's, like <laughs> four, there's a collective 14 people in the chat who are watching because they hate us. And everybody else is here to support us and Hikaru and each other. Right, chat? All right, Chatovic. All right. <laughs> Hikaru's on the grind, but MVL has found a way to coordinate his pieces. And this is a bit of a problem now. Um... Uh, sorry, I've just read that Hikaru has set a goal for NHS to get to 100k on Twitch by the end of January. Goodness me, Hikaru, you have too much faith in me. That's easy clap. What are you talking about? You know, um, I was talking with uh, fellow content creator uh, Eric Rosen, uh, fellow retired washed up international master like myself, Eric Rosen, uh, and yesterday. And he was saying that January is a time of relaxation because you grind in November and December and then you relax in January. And I said, relax, relax in January. Do you know how many people are gonna have New Year's resolutions to play chess? Because they're gonna get a chess board for Christmas. It's the yeah. total opposite. It's the total, chess people are gonna, oh, my New Year's resolution to learn chess. They're gonna go on Twitch. They're gonna see Anna Rudolph. They're gonna see GM Hikaru. Maybe they'll make the mistake of going to Gotham Chess. And then that is how they're going to be introduced to the world of chess. They'll see Eric Rosen. But that aside, guys, let's focus on the game for now because MVL has 30 seconds. He has 30 seconds on the clock. 30 seconds uh, is not too much. There's a 10 second increment per move. So usually players don't really flag, but running out of time is concerning, especially when your opponent still has more time. So I'm very happy to see that Hikaru is still comfortably over three minutes. And I like the arrows that Levy has been drawing. I think Hikaru would approve. That seems like the plan here for White. Right. He just, he pushed the pawn on the other side of the board. I, I, he, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I, I think this is actually a poison. This is a Trojan horse. I don't think you take this guy. Because it, it, it lets black get a... Like a consolidation on the D file. Don't take. I think the reason I was drawing F3 is because I want to go H4, H5. But you can't play H4 because you lose this. So F3, H4, H5. There's F3. But now Knight D6. And apparently black is okay. No, I mean, practically speaking, black is anything but okay. This is still very much a fight. I think Hikaru has to go H4, H5. And I think he had to stop this knight maneuver with f3 before. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but let's see if I'm right or wrong. Also, Anna, you have queen e1, queen b4, or queen h4. The queen is like the lighthouse. It oh, is man. a lighthouse. I'm really worried that, as you said, maybe we should have prevented this setup of black, and now it's not that simple anymore. Um, the time situation is great. Once again, it's three times more time for Hikaru. It's still a queen versus two rooks, but somehow by now MVL has managed to find a setup that makes his pieces coordinate well enough, especially that night, the glue. Remember the glue? Well, there is glue now. There was no glue before, but as Hikaru told us, the glue is really important. I just hope this glue will somehow melt. You know, maybe high temperature, the glue melts and the pieces fall apart. I'm I going hope. to just uh, open up a few uh, round threes because I think Aranyan and uh, so Giri drew. Giri and Carlson have drawn their game. That's again, guys. It, it's it's not part of the memes. I mean, it was just a very complicated and, e and equal fight. Uh, the, the 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 oh, and and yes. Yeah, speaking of Aranyan and, and and Nepo have already started. They're on the bottom left. Uh, this is what I warned about. When you're playing against the queen, whether you have two rooks, rook and bishop, rook bishop knight. Uh, 
you need coordination. And here, MVL has perfect coordination. Everything yeah. is defending everything, and he has yeah. no obvious weaknesses. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do here. I don't know what we're going to do. Still a fight. Still a very complicated game. Mm -hmm. And still very winnable. Chat, don't be fooled by this machine. Don't be fooled. Yeah. What's a little sad is that the engine here says that black can just stay passive by shuffling a rook on the seven. So it's, it suggested rook f7, rook nah. c7, going back and forth. But for a human being, even if you are a super grandmaster, that's so sad that there's nothing to do but going back and forth. But considering the game that MVL had, I'm sure he's very happy to get this far. Now the biggest problem oh, yeah. is that Hikaru probably has to, like, He's got to balance his emotions because he's like, damn, I was winning and I still feel like I'm winning. Mm -hmm. But if he makes like a mistake in trying to win too much, it can backfire. Uh, and, and so now he's got to kind of manage that emotion, right, Anna? Which is difficult because if you've been winning the whole game, it's now very difficult to be like, uh, 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 I got to back up. I'm not actually winning. You keep trying to win. That's what we do. Exactly. It's so important what you mentioned, the psychological side of having a winning position. And once you spoil it, uh, and it does look like Hikaru's advantage, most of his advantage is gone, but you need to find, uh, you need to somehow find composure and realize from which moment you now are not fighting for a win or you are fighting for a win, but on the safe side. So you don't push too much you don't risk too much because then black can turn the tables and the second loss would be too much it's a four game match so it's crucial that even if Hikaru does not win this game he doesn't go all in it's not a game where you should go all in yeah and h5 is a very nice move the problem now is if you take the knight is getting to uh to f5 yeah Hikaru was one move slow uh, when when this F three uh, H four plan came to be, no good good defense by MVL, great defense by MVL. He uh, he got his uh, he kind of got his chance when uh, when it appeared and he took it and now he consolidated in the in the proper way. Like one file shift and the game can be different. If it's an A pawn, then you push the pawn and at least maybe you break in somehow. But still, it's so hard to win. So so hard to win. You can even lose. Like you can even like play like bishop d3 and all of a sudden it's not even clear what's happening. Are you getting attacked? So why are the players beginning when round 2 isn't over? Uh because at this stage they just go because they don't want to wait 30 minutes until the top of the round. They if you if you finish then that's it. Yeah, the they way, all have their own mini matches. So regardless of this being the second game for Hikaru, it's already just already the third game for Aronian and Nepomnishi and the other matches should be starting soon. I'm gonna also open the rest of the quarterfinals for round three for them. Uh, yeah, two games are underway already for round three for those pairs. Wesley So versus Timur Jabov and Levon Aronian versus Jan Nepomnishi. MVL just very confidently traded his rooks away for the queen and left himself in an endgame where there's a passed pawn. Oh. Is this, what is going on here? He's winning the pawn on d4. Could this be winning somehow? King g5. So you can't just push because then the king gets there. But what if you play king g5? Knight d4, some sort of h6, king f6, king e5? I think this could be winning. The The thing is, even if Hikaru will be a pawn down here after knight takes d4, it doesn't matter. It's the quality of the pass pawn. How advanced this pass pawn is, is key because the knight will have to try to make it back to, to somehow stop the pawn. But how do you stop it? Black apparently... So if you go king f8, you're too passive. You have to play knight f3 first. What that does is it dislodges the king from f6, and then black has a moment to get back, and knight h4 hits your bishop. So knight f3 is the only move here that doesn't basically lose. I think I think allowing king f6 loses. So what's going to happen is check, attack the knight, here attack the bishop, 
Bishop moves, and then the king gets back. But then the knight is stuck on the side, and Hikaru's king can make it to the middle. And that's how he's gonna try to win this game. Now, one thing to remember, if black, if all these pieces disappear that I've highlighted, this is a draw because black makes it to the corner first. And king, bishop, pawn versus king is a draw, is a draw, if the square is not the same color as the bishop in the corner. This is a very famous endgame. So, this pawn on b2 could potentially decide this endgame for Hikaru, if, it's, if it stays alive. So believe in b2, guys. Believe in b2. We gotta believe in b2. I think I think this endgame is, is just so much more pleasant to look at than the previous position where it was the two yeah. rooks uh, with a kind of a seventh rank defense, everything glued together. Now there's no more glue. The h6 pawn cannot be glued onto the board anymore. Now MVL has found knight f3. Of course, he realized that king f8 is very bad. Hikaru has to go um, king f4. Uh, I, I'm, a, yeah, and all of this is happening. Now, where does this, now, first of all, Hikaru can repeat moves right now with King G5, but I think he, he must sense that something is, something is happening here. Uh, if the bishop goes back, King F6, H7, King G7, King E5, he's winning this pawn. There's no risk in playing back, but also King G5 is completely fine. King G5 is just a force draw. Uh, so let's see what he chooses. Hopefully there will be no situation where it gets to a force draw. I do think that this is our best practical chance. And I'm not sure how forcing it was, but I'm very happy that this is how the game went. Because earlier it looked like MVL was holding on to the position. But as we said, just because the engine says you can just go back and forth with the rook, for a human being, it's not that easy to just do that because it feels like you're in a very passive situation and your opponent will make progress while you are sitting on the same squares. So he ended up pushing on the king side, his pawns, and that weakened the g6 pawn, which led to this end game. I think Hikaru can win this. Terribly tricky. For example, here there's knight to g2 and don't just go taking pawns because knight f4 comes and hits your king and bishop. So knight g2 now is, is, is the only defense. Uh... Again, and engine might see a draw, but that doesn't mean that with 20 seconds you figure this out. There is a yeah. very high chance something goes wrong here. Knight f3 is not the best move according to the engine, so that's already 90. a good start for Hikaru. Whoa, 91. Whoa. Whoa. While well, the bishop's under attack, I mean, I understand the point. Uh, if this pawn was on d4, you would play bishop e4 and dominate the knight, as Hikaru mm -hmm. says. It would just, this would be easy, and uh, the knight cannot move anywhere, but you can't. You can go to b1, I mean, to me, to me, f5 looks far more natural, but what, what do I know about chess? Oh, and the pawn is gonna go. Uh-huh. Oh. So that's the case, uh, that's the situation there, what do we do to, to stop it? We can't really stop it. Will we just wait until it's on d2 and then bishop to g4 if you play bishop f5? Yeah, that might have just saved the game for MVL. Mm winning this tempo and then just pushing the pawn down. If he didn't go for this, Hikaru would have won the D pawn and then he would have just gone for B7. Oh, 91 is, is that's very nice. The king mm. is behind the pawn, so this pawn can just come down. Uh, oh nice. no. Nice. Is there is there anything else? Is there any other way in which we could avoid giving up the h7 pawn because the issue is that once the d pawn starts running and if you need to use the bishop to to guard the d1 square then the h7 pawn will be taken yeah that's uh an unfortunate reality of the situation mm. sassy decided that this position is already zero 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 ruthless yeah he carved 10 seconds he will he he will play a move. Uh, King d5 is is probably the the way you try to make the draw. But yeah, bishop f5 and it's it's kind of all the same. Um, d4 is going to happen now, and and there's really there's really not too much. I think Hikaru is just uh, th th this is more or less a draw offer. He's going to go for c7 or something. I think you can also take. Yes, you can take and play king c7, or you can 
well, which move are there? I guess all of them. Yeah, he takes, that's the most practical. All the pieces will be gone from the board. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Draw. Kudos to MVL. Very nice defense. Yeah, he found a really precise defense. I really hoped that by going for this end game where we had the bishop versus knight, there was some chance. But with such precise defense, I guess even this was not enough. Very well fought by MVL, who still keeps his advantage. But this game was good. Hikaru had the advantage. It just wasn't that simple to convert it. This is wild stuff. Uh, every game is starting like a waterfall. I mean, it's just cascading. So at the bottom left, you guys have Arunyan versus Nepo. Wesley So and Rajabov are already in the middle of a battle here in the uh, in their third game. This was an English, a very interesting English with Queen F5. This is actually the main line as ridiculous as it looks. The mm -hmm. whole point is to damage black structure, and uh, this is the current middle game position. So these are already uh, the third games of each mini-match, and Hikaru's third game, too, will start soon. I'm guessing both players there, both Hikaru and MBL, will get their 10-minute break, but uh, these other matches are underway. As for the situation in the Carlson versus Geary match, that's a 1-1. Both games have been drawn. Nepamyash is leading with a point ahead of Levon Aronian. So Aronian needs a comeback in these final two games. And Rajabov too is leading because of winning the first game and drawing the second one. Yeah, that's exactly right. The only... Uh... And I feel really silly because I realized it's also on our template, so I don't need to say it. Oh, no, no, no. It's, 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 I, I'm not even sure, Chad. Did, did, do you guys even see the scoreboard? Do you guys even know it's there? I, I forgot it's there, so I thought sometimes you need to announce it, but no, it's there. Everybody can see it. Good morning, Anna. Uh, well, it's the only match that uh, that has two draws, right? Uh, the Geary match. In every yes. other match, there has been one decisive result. Uh, and now, well, the third the third match could be the third game in each match. Could uh, could decide the kind of the first mini match of the day. So now, if if MVL wins one more, he wins today's mini match. Uh, the same can be said for Timur, and the same can be said for Nepo. Uh, if they finish the third, they don't play the fourth. But obviously, we're cheering uh, for Hikaru to at least hold with Black and then try to play for a win with White in the next game. Do we? Does do we have a favorite in the others? Chat. Do we want Rajabov to win? Do we want Wesley to win? Who do we want to win, Chat? Actually, that match counts for Hikaru's next matchup. So if Hikaru moves on to the semifinals, his opponent is either Timur Rajabo or Wesley. So, so take your pick. Who do you want as Hikaru's opponent? But Hikaru, of course, first needs to stomp MVL, and MVL is leading at the moment. So we, we are focusing on that first task first, but the, the quarterfinals between So and Rajabo will determine who will be Hikaru's opponent in the semis. Okay, this position looks disgusting for Rajabov. Look at all this space. The computer is already such a savage it wants to play G4. It wants to say, I'm going to put every single pawn I have on the fourth rank, and then we're going to see what happens. G4 takes away knight coming to F5, and also threatens H4, H5 in the future, and bishop to G2 to play on this diagonal. So G4 is a... I would never play G4. I'd probably play C5. Doesn't C5 look supernatural? If I'm playing it, it's probably bad, so... C5 no, I, I'm just trying to understand if there's any trick that we are missing, because c5 looks like such a natural move to gain even more space, restrict the dark squared bishop of black. Yeah, and, well, it, it, it it's not a bad move uh, to then try to fill up uh, uh, the square on c4, but at some point, white is going to have to take, or else get taken. Um, so... Rajabov is trying to kind of hang back here and, and hold everything together. I've played this line with white, this four knights English. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I mean, this kind of e3 bishop before queen c2 main line. Highly recommended for those of you that are studying serious theory in the English. Mm -hmm. Highly, highly recommended. Highly recommend this, this, this four knights and it's really good. There's still no move in that position, but I, I definitely think Wesley so must be considering c5 as one of the main options. Yeah, c5, he's definitely considering. Wesley's also quite strong. I'm sure he's considering g4 as a restricting move. Uh, let's see what's going on in the bottom left-hand side. 
Oh, the, is that the same board? <laughs> oh, well, it's I just, okay. yeah, yeah, I, I meant to put... You've uh, just switched, I think. Yeah, I meant to put Nepo Aronian. My bad, my bad, my bad. Magnus game? Mm -hmm. Oh, they started Ooh, already. Another theoretical line. God, this is so much... This this is such a pissing contest between these two. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no no sorry sorry I, I I sorry I thought you said another theoretical line in the Rogozin. Sorry I thought they no. went back to it but no, no it's a four night scotch. They moved over to E forty five territories. Okay, got it. Uh, this is okay. The, 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 this makes sense then. I'm gonna put Sora Jabov on the bottom. Uh, yeah, this is some sort of mainline position. Where you, you give away this, you damage your structure. What, why are they... I'm pretty sure this is like very known theoretically to be just a draw. But let's see what Magnus comes up with. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, this line... I was taught to play this line um, at the European Championship. Where we were facing Russia on board one. Uh, usually the Russian teams are some of the strongest opponents you can face at chess Olympiads and European Championships. So uh, my captain instructed me to play this line with the white pieces and aim for a draw. That was our team strategy. Wow. Draw like with the word. white pieces. But who was your captain? Would you name your captain? I, I cannot. Now that yeah. I put him on the spot. Actually, it almost worked out because oh. then we were winning on a board with the black pieces. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's why I'm not an Olympic team captain. I'm just a guy with a bad haircut playing chess on the internet. So, uh, who who was your opponent? Who were you playing? What was the Russian team uh, like? Who were oh, the I had a really strong opponent, Katerina Lano. She is a mm. former European champion, twenty five hundred plus rating. So, in terms of uh, the rating gap, yeah, I was like two hundred rating points below her, and uh, I was happy with the draw. But uh, you know, it was it's interesting that. At the team competition, right, it's four boards and the two players with the white pieces. So I had white and our board four had white. And the two of us mm -hmm. were instructed to go for a drawish line. That was the team strategy. You, you do what you got to do to win. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's the reality of the situation. I, I could never do that. That's actually one of the reasons why like, I struggle so much against GMs. I play what I want to play rather than what's practical. And yeah. my logic was always if I play a slow game, they're going to outplay me. But yeah, maybe once... Com competitions come back i just gotta suck the life out of the position and <laughs> and then they uh and it, your game ended in a draw right so yeah yeah, yeah. I, I managed to draw because usually so this position is very likely to appear on the board and then once the knight makes it to f5 it's even more likely that it's a draw because you you will get to have an opposite colored bishop end game but once the bishop from c8 is traded for the knight and that's like super drawish yeah yeah it's uh these positions, I don't know. I remember uh, I was working with Grandmaster Wojciech Miranda from Poland, who actually just recently wrote a book. If you guys want to go uh, check it out, he he sent me a copy. He signed it and everything. It was very nice. Uh, I didn't make it to his foreword because I didn't take enough lessons with him. One of my good friends has been doing lessons with him for a long time, and uh, he made it into the foreword. It was like, thank you to my students. I was like, what? We did like 20 lessons. I guess that wasn't enough. But uh, he gave me a file a long time ago on, on this line, and he had some computer improvement on, like, move 21 or something. And I'm like, Wojciech, I love you, but never. I would never, ever, ever, this would never work for me. I, something needs to happen before move 21 in my games. I just can't play these lines. Yeah, it, it's it's a tough one. Um, I guess on the highest level, it's just everything can become so theoretical. Everything is so well analyzed that uh, they just have a recipe against any opening. And that's why it's great to see that in rapid chess, because this is a rapid format, they choose, they have been choosing in the preliminary stage and also for today, some not that common openings. We see sidelines, we see opening choices that are not their go-to most solid openings. So I'm really happy to to see this from the top chess players that in Rapid and Blitz, they are more likely to take chances also when it comes to opening choices and their repertoire, to mix it up a little, to shake it up and sometimes take more risk when it when that's the case. It can backfire. MVL almost, uh, almost got into a lost position mm -hmm. after choosing that sideline. Uh, eventually he defended well and managed to hold it to a draw, but he got himself into trouble 
basically out of that sideline that he went for willingly. He chose that line. He did. He did. I, I, I can't tell you what kind of new innovation the players have come up with here. White is extremely solid. Black has a damaged structure, but two bishops. Uh, and that dark squared bishop is, really has no counterpart. It's just going to fly around the board uh, and do damage. Uh, in case anyone's unfamiliar with the format today, we will be seeing every match play at least three rapid games and as many as four to decide the result for today. There is no Blitz, there is no Armageddon. If it's tied 2-2, two to two, whatever the score is, you come back tomorrow and you decide your best of two. If at the end of the rapid games, today and tomorrow, it's level, then we have to play Blitz and Armageddon. And that will happen tomorrow. So tomorrow has a chance to be a longer show. But if the players fight 2-2, two to two, they go home today. Uh, we, they just tease us a little bit with some chess and then we actually, you know, the show is, the big show is actually tomorrow. Today is important to, of course, because if someone wins, so out of four rapid games, now we have two matches that already are decided in one play, in one player's favor, not fully decided because with two more games to go, anything can happen, but they are leading in the matches. And if they keep their lead after five, after not five, but four games, they that will mean that they have won the first mini match and tomorrow their opponent is in a must win situation we will only see Blitz and Armageddon if the second mini match is won by the opponent. In this case, for mm -hmm. instance, Rajabov. If he yes. wins today, Wesley So has to win tomorrow's mini match, no matter what. If if he does not, he's out. He's knocked out. Yes, that's exactly right. This one's gonna take a while. So what I'm gonna do, as the usual, I'm gonna put them on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys see that MVL and Hikaru have started their game, uh, do let me know. I'm gonna put up, uh, so I put up So Raja. That's So Raja. What is happening <laughs> here? A A five from A five from Rajabov. He's trying to break out. So in the and... position where we were pondering whether C five will be pushed, it did not happen because that pawn on, yeah, the pawn is still on C four. Wesley decided to go for something else. Yeah, he goes for something else. Now, now, now he's very happy here with this pawn on a4. Bishop is coming. Uh, Hikaru game started. Not on my screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a little bit laggy. It is. It, 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 yeah, it's probably just a little bit laggy. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get some moves. We'll get some moves. Um, so. Uh, let's go for. Let's, 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 let's check back in in, in like mm -hmm. a minute or two. Unless I'm just getting. Unless I just got very cleanly jubated. <laughs> I don't see moves for Hikaru yet, but I'm going to keep checking it in case. Oh. Okay, chat. <laughs> I see how it is, chat. I see. I see. Believing Twitch chat in 2020. Well, y'all got like a month and five days, and then it's 2021. And then uh, then I, we'll, we'll, we'll see about the trust levels. Next Seriously, month. chat, we now have a clip of me blowing my nose. I think there are better moments of the stream. I do struggle with allergies, so I don't think it's that funny. But if you guys find it funny, go ahead. Oh my god, these commentators blow their noses? That's crazy. <laughs> that, is, that is nuts. Oh my gosh, top tier commentary. You know, they didn't build a studio for us. We're just sitting in the comfort of our own homes. But who knew that we're also human? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess we should hide that we are humans. Speaking of being humans, uh, we we haven't had a break, bathroom breaks. The players get bathroom breaks. We don't. I hope you are doing well, Levi, because no food break or bathroom breaks. I'm doing okay. If at any point you need to go, uh, I, we, I, I like I actually think once the games kind of uh, draw closer to the end here, I'll have to. There is a waffle awaiting me in the kitchen. Um, I'm a just waffle. a little bit. I haven't had a waffle in ages. Now I want a waffle too. I Anna, I'm a little bit perplexed, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm missing something. Uh, did Rajabov just put his knight on a square where it can be taken for free? Kinda looks like that to me. Yes. Let's see why that is not hanging. Whoa, whoa! That was a slip. What if I take the horse? I lose. Oh, great! I lose. Oh, okay. I lose. Check. King b2, rook c2 comes in with check. King to a1, bishop to a5, bishop to c3. Okay, great. 
if bishop d3, bishop c3, there's king b1. So then rook c3 forks the bishops. So then if you take, I take here, check, and then I pick up the bishop again. Of course. Of course, chat. Of course, chat. Of course, chat. Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you can't take. Really wow. Good stuff. What a beautiful move. That's a beautiful move by, by Rajabov. He's, he's on fire. He won the first game against Wesley with the black pieces, with a brutal attack against the White King. The second game was a solid draw, and now Rajabov is winning, well, trying to win with the black pieces again. It's crazy how, how he goes for it when he's known to be a very solid player. This actually is a matchup of two of the most solid players you will see in Super Grandmaster tournaments. Yes, it is, and MVL Hikaru, guys, I, I, I've put it up. Hikaru this time not going for uh, for Berlin. Not going for Berlin. He's... Um, let's... let's Oh, D6. Wow, total sideline. G6. D6, G6 from Hikaru. He's going for a King's Indian style. Wow, okay. Well, that's very nice. That is very nice. And you know what else has been very nice, guys? The support over the past few days. So many people supporting. Uh, these things, you know, people uh, people are generally focusing on the chess. Uh, and there's there's not a tremendous amount of, of subs and bits. And I just want to say that, oh, what is this, day four? Those of you that have subbed with, for example, Prime Gaming, there's been people mm. gifting subs. Just just the heart for all of you. And Thank you so much. Honestly, this is insane. We have uh, the two channels combined have way over 30,000 of you watching the action. We are here. The main stage is on G at GM Hikaru. Today, my channel is live. Tomorrow is going to be back again at Levis. We are alternating. But every single day, over 30,000 of you tuning in to root for your favorite streamer slash five-time US chess champion slash number one player at the Blitz Chess slash the person that almost took down Magnus Carlsen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sending support. Hikaru's way. Hype train incoming <laughs> just on call. And as Levy would say, um, you do have the option of going for free a subscriber levy you are really good at the prime gaming stuff so i'm gonna let it mm -hmm. for you again right, to explain chat listen up in two easy steps you can unlock a an oasis of possibility not just for chess improvement but for memes but for dreams if you already pay the big amazon company for faster delivery you can link your amazon to your twitch oh my goodness it's starting already once you have that down, you get a blue crown next to your username. You can click the subscribe button and it will say subscribe for free. That's all you got to do. Everybody? And it's free. It's literally free. It's not It's not a scam. It's free and you're supporting the creator because for us creators, it counts as a normal sub. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You can support us without supporting us. It's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a roundabout way. You can also support us by supporting us. Uh, that also works. Um... Look at that. Look at that rolling in. And you know what else you should do? You could support You could support on the Hikaru channel. Unfortunately, it only locks you into one. Uh, so wherever you want to be loyal, you can be loyal. Uh, and you should also sub to Anna. That's what you should also do. Uh, that's where we're, we're restreaming to today. Anna underscore chess. Thank you. Um, I already see many Prime Gaming subs on my channel too. Thank you so much, everyone, for the support. I gotta tell you, like a few people every time, you know, the past few times I've done this when we weren't on my channel, people go take, make the effort to come over and do it there. And like, that's amazing. You guys are great. We're obviously live on Hikaru's channel today. We're trying to push 40,000 combined. That would be kind of nice. Can mm -hmm. we get to 40,000 combined? Someone call up a friend. I know y'all got a friend that watches Twitch. All right. Call them up. Yo, just tune in. They're playing for a lot of money. It's chess. They play chess on Twitch? Of course they do. Call him up. Five gifted subs in the chat by Pfft Bro. Great name, by the way. Fantastic name. Uh, guys, this is gonna be this is gonna be a tough fight here against MVL. This is gonna be a tough fight. I know we got two two same games. I'm gonna put Magnus up. Your oh, call boy. to action was way too strong. I usually type in to to thank for the subscription, but now there's so many names I can't even keep up. Thank you guys. This is too much. And the hype train let's let's push that level five hype train it's at 200 percent on hikaru's channel i want to see that at i want to see level six i want to see two thousand percent can we i want y'all you know they say that if you get a hype train to 99 99 percent it goes to level six it's a legendary okay they don't actually say that just for compliance and legality uh that's a joke uh but if you'd like to attempt to do it uh by all means you know 
go ahead and, and, and try it out. But I'm just saying, uh, I don't sue me when it doesn't actually happen. So um, try your hardest, though. Try your hardest. Try hardest. Meanwhile, a pawn trade has occurred in the center of the board. I think Hikaru's next move will be... I don't actually know. Never mind. I was going to say knight a5, but then bishop c2. So... Bish oh, I was just about to say bishop to g4. To threaten take, take, knight d4. That's what I think. I think that's going to happen. I think that's a very logical move. You got to develop... Well, the bishop was developed on d7, but it wasn't really an active piece, and now there's a concrete threat because of the d4 pawn being really vulnerable. I like this. I think this this probably was the most precise move in order to force white have to protect the pawn bishop e3 to support the central pawn. And now let's see what's the correct follow-up for Hikaru, because the e4 pawn is vulnerable too. It's both about e4 and d4. Yeah, this pawn cannot be taken right away because bishop to d5 with el tenedor. <laughs> el tenedor on d5. Uh, so probably rook e8. God, I really wonder what's going to happen next game. I think uh, if Hikaru has white and he has to win, it's going to be very interesting stuff. Very interesting. So, um, knight a5. Yes, there it is. h3. Oh. Take the bishop? I would assume that's what we're going to do. Guys, I appreciate everything. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to thank everybody. Uh, I saw that Cam Zach... Thank you, Cam Zach. Uh, gave uh, five so subs. So many subs. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Sorry, Levi, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting you because I'm, I'm just like, at what number are we? Hikaru is also so close to hitting 600,000 followers on Twitch. Um, so we are we are almost there with the follower number. The sub, the sub number is going up again. Thank you so much for the hype train. It's almost 500%. It's almost 500. It is 500. Oh, is it? Has it already achieved it? I, I, it's, slow. it's slow on my end. I'm in Europe. Yes. I, I get it with the delay, the yes. lag, the ping. Camzak just gave 10 subs. We're at 618%. If we get 107 more percent, that is my newest chess.com rating. I just hit it this morning, 725. We have a chance in the next minute to surpass that level. So I'm just saying, if you do it, we might, we might, we might get higher rated than Gotham Chess. I think Hikaru's going to take this bishop and play rook e8. So I think I'd... so too. That's such a logical way to continue. You, you do want to take the bishop once you have played knight a5. You don't really want to just sit on a5 with the knight. Ooh. Yeah, I think, uh, I, th I think that's very natural. Yeah. Um, MVL, MVL. Okay, queen e7, queen e7. But then queen e but the, but, 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 but the bishop, Hikaru, but, 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 but the bishop. You, you don't want you, why did you go knight a5 if you don't want the damn bishop this is what i don't understand what is he gonna play bishop c4 oh wow is he saying that the bishop will not run away because if bishop c2 he just wants to jump to the c4 square so he's claiming that the light square bishop will either be glued to b3 or the knight will be strong on c4 is that the idea chat is moving way too fast i saw somebody uh there, there was a there was a massive sub bomb so Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna we're gonna try to bring you this this high paced chess. Right now we're perplexed why Horsey didn't take the bishop. Uh, I imagine that MVL's next move is going to be bishop c two. If it's not, I don't know. I I don't understand chess. Was it over eight hundred uh, percent the hype train? Did I read that correctly? I think once it disappeared, it it was yes. Now it fades into the night and can only be triggered in an hour. That's one thing I don't understand. Like, if you have a baby hype train, and then somewhere in the next 59 minutes, your community, like, pops off, it doesn't get re-triggered. So... Yeah. But this is, um... In any games? case, thank you so much for the support. This is insane. Just how much you're supporting Hikaru's channel, my channel, too. Just kept, kept popping up with the notifications. Uh, I never in my life had 1,600 subscribers, but I think we're about to hit it. And that's a new emote slot. I, I saw a lot of emotes, but I could never hit 1,600 because I thought that's a huge number. That's a very high number for a small channel like mine. That is amazing. Uh, that is 
a milestone will easily pass. We, 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 got, we got five more days because we're obviously, you know, we're shooting for day nine, which is going to be the final day of the final round, you know, the highest room in the highest tower. Uh, so Hikaru's got to go C6, or I guess he's going to play Rook C8 also. He can also play Rook C8. Um, okay, I have just discovered that you can actually change the settings of your hype train. Well, it's, you know, it's just another another day of discovering that you don't know everything about everything, and that's okay. Life is about learning, mm -hmm. and uh, learning should bring you joy and happiness. And we're all chess mm, time fans. Time, space, I mean, harmony? Am I feeling the vibes coming in yeah. that direction? Yeah, dude, you gotta just, like, you just gotta, like, learn, dude, you know? I'm saying, like, what you gotta do, man? <laughs> C6. <laughs> C6, Hikaru, good man. Oh, Bishop D2. Ooh, oh, a fancy man, MVL. C6 doesn't get, doesn't move his bishop, takes the horse, and now Hikaru's gonna play Queen F6. Okay, tablas. That's what this is. We're gonna tablas have tab tablas here. It's gonna just be a draw. <laughs> just be a draw. That's what. That's how you say draw in Spanish. Chat. Now you guys learn something else. Where did you pick up your Spanish? Cause you know a lot. Uh, La Escuela. Uh, from uh -huh. third grade, from third grade up until 12th. I did Spanish for nine years. Nine uh, years? Yeah. Oh, and then I'm going to take back that I'm impressed. <laughs> I did Spanish for two years. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, no, it just felt then. like, you know. Uh, Anna, I haven't spoken Spanish in like seven years or taken any classes on it. Now I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm the sad. two years is fine, but if you tell me you studied it for nine years now, your level is good. It's, it's good. good. I, can stuff, have a, I, can, I can have a conversation. I'll tell you this. muy bien. Let me see los sabes. Hablas muy bien. Well, okay, well, see, there, there you go. See, I can't <laughs> quite speak it, but oh my God, am I a god at understanding. I am, I could, li I could watch a show. No, I can't. They speak way too fast on the show. If you speak <laughs> to me like I'm seven years old, I can understand everything, okay? All right, uh, yeah, responding is difficult. Um, the speaking is the hardest part. If you get no speaking practice in any language, then... Uh... Very true. My Russian is super passive. I understand. I can read and I can understand it if I hear it, but speaking, no. What I do know is that, you, Levi, you said that we have these goals and such, and, and then the community decided to say uh, 1,600 is, is easy, and they already hit it on my channels. So I have a new emote. I need to think, what do we use it for? Because I didn't think it was that accessible. I have no idea what emote we need to make. Uh, yeah, I just kind of let my community do their thing. Uh, if I do something stupid on stream, they'll oftentimes screen grab it and very quickly turn it into an emote. So we have a lot of uh, full frame emotes uh, but my favorite is, is God. Yo, if you have one of my emotes, put it in the Hikaru chat. We're not live on my channel today, so I'm, I'm going to see how many, how many, how many, uh, people in my community we got, we got there. Uh, let's, let's try to, let's try to take it over. Oh, too I'm much XQCL. No, exactly. too much XQCL. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my favorite Gotham emotes and that's the zoom in. I think that's brilliant. I need emotes like that at some point in my life. It's so good. <sighs> XQCL I use that on Discord one. too. I use your Zoom in emotes on Twitch, other Twitch channels, and on Discord too. Just like to emphasize a statement, a message. I think it just goes it goes really well with any message. Thank you, thank you. That's uh, that's that's very kind. Uh, I saw a message about updating the standings. Uh, the standings are completely up to date. I I I don't know what. Like sometimes we're a little behind, but. In this case, I think you just came from the future, my guy. Uh, I I, th <laughs> I don't know any results, so it looks it looks still very much in the balance. Everything. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It looks like it's emote only chat, but you guys are just energetic. You guys are just energetic. We love it. We absolutely love it. Thank you, you know what so I love? Thank you so much for the support again. This is this is crazy. How I, you just keep flower powering frogs, memes everywhere, and. Gifted subs, subscriptions, Prime Gaming, the hype train. Also, if you cannot subscribe, that's still fine. Thank you for being here. This is the most important. You are here. You are rooting for Hikaru. And remember, Hikaru unfortunately lost the first game. So we need all that flower power again. Can we do it again? He needs your energy. He needs your support. He has to make a comeback in this match. Meanwhile, 
Levon is winning against Nepo. And this is winning because it's all coming down to the pawns. Rook and two versus bishop and two. Uh, but the split pawns, we talked about this earlier in the day. This will be decisive. King, pawn, rock, pawn, king, rock, pawn, etc. And we're going to slowly finish the job. Levon with a win gets back into the match and it's going to be one and a half, one and a half, and we will go to the deciding game. Wesley So versus Timur. Timur's knight d5. Uh, compl oh, wait, wait, Anna, let's stay here. Both these guys have less than one minute on the clock, and this position is insanely complicated. The Hikaru game is on the bottom left of your screen. Ooh, this is exciting. This is exciting. This could Wesley could lose the whole match right here, and I I'm predicting, Anna, hmm. he's gonna lose. It could happen, because it's a four-game mini-match. Every match is of four rapid games, but... If a player wins after three, that is, you already scored two and a half points, there's no need to play the fourth game. So Timur Rajabo, with a win, could already say, for today, I'm the winner. Tomorrow, Wesley, you better make a comeback, because if not, I'm eliminating you. Yeah, it's so close. It's so close to that. I, I don't know what has gotten to Wesley. He definitely got himself into a big trouble in the first game and was punished for it. And this one... This third game looks so scary. What if what if that pawn is being pushed with a check? Uh, and you can't take it. You, you can't take it. You cannot take it. Bishop d2. Apparently he had his only move was bishop f4. That was apparently the only move that didn't give away advantage. But like again, how do you like how do you decide? You you don't know. You don't know. You'd rather defend the f2 pawn. Bishop f4 just literally hangs this pawn. Like I said, this position looks kind of wild and I predict Wesley loses it. I, it just looks too difficult to defend with 10 seconds on the clock. It's way too difficult with that king being constantly targeted. It's a position without queens. You know that the queen is the most valuable and most powerful attacking piece. But here, even without queens, the white king is not out of danger thanks to that A pass bond, thanks to the very active black pieces. What is the rook doing on g1? Bishop still on f1. Uh, apparently knight c3 was also not the way to go, as natural as it looked. Apparently, uh... Oh, no. <gasps> oh no, the pawn is gone now because there's no more bishop d2 check. The idea was that the pawn <sighs> couldn't be taken. Oh my god. Oh my god, king a3. It's a move he thought that couldn't be played, but now the bishop has no useful discovered check. Wesley so going full giga brain, and now he's going to play king b3. That's what he's going to do. He's just going to play king b3, and he's completely out of danger. Or is he going to take? Can he take and like play king c5? No, no, no don't do that. Don't do that. Wesley's bad idea. Bad Gotham. Bad Gotham. Don't do that. Don't take the bishop. I think you have to but, play king b3. But if he doesn't take it, isn't it just plain bad? The whole position? He does <gasps> King c5? What? Wait, was he supposed to go back? I don't understand anything. I what was going so? on? If king b3, it was losing because knight a2! 10 oh. seconds left for Rajabo. Will he find it? He has a winning move here. He has a winning move after king c5. He played it! Rookie With six. Five seconds. He had five seconds left and he played the winning move, the only winning move. D5, D5, D5 to get the king out. Oh my gosh, if he had played my move, king B3, there was knight A2 gluing the position together with rook A3 mate. I did not see that. I did not see that. I did not see that. B6 and it's mate it's and one. one. Mate it's one, rook A5. It's mate in one. Rook A5, mate in one. Rook A5, game over. Wesley so loses. Game over, match over. For today, at least, this is match over. Rajabo wins the first game. Tomorrow, Wesley has to fight back. He's in a must-win situation. This quarterfinal is looking amazing for the Azerbaijani Grandmaster. What a finish. And Wesley blundering in the end, the mate. But actually, after rookie six, there's no way out. The threat is B6. Wow. Timur Rajabov is a gangster. That's what I have to say. He played some sick chess today. All because of this move, knight d5. Once this move appears, it's equal, but psychologically, it's so difficult for white. And within 10 moves, the game is over. I just want to show everybody, I was saying king b3 here, thinking if rook a3, king b4. The winning move here for black is something I didn't even see. Knight a2, threatening the rook, but more importantly, threatening rook a3, which is just disgusting. And the king is mated. It's a mating net, and you're just going to... Okay. Um, That's crazy. So apparently it was correct to take the bishop, but after knight a2 check, he had to step back to b3 and allow his rook being captured with mm -hmm. a check. That's what and he then, had to find. 
then king b2 i mean that's that's crazy because naturally you want to break out and run uh and in that position that was not what he should have done okay 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 uh something was with wesley's name oh wesley's so sad oh god wesley's so okay yeah so sad yeah 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 but luckily he 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 can come back tomorrow we're cheering for wesley because well he's a rival um yeah He's a teammate of Hikaru, both of them have been playing, obviously, for the Olympic team of the US, and they won gold medal together as teammates at the Chess Olympiad in 2016. Um, the opponent of Hikaru, if Hikaru makes it to the semis, one of these gentlemen is the opponent, so it's either Timur Rajabov or Wesley So, but for now we need to focus on Hikaru's next step, which is to come back in this match against Maxim mm -hmm. Grav. Yes, very much so, very much so. No pun intended. Queen c6 and Hikaru is actually trending toward being slightly better. This bishop looking mighty nice on this diagonal. Mighty, mighty nice. 30k, 30k viewers, is that what I'm seeing? Just on the GM Hikaru channel? Wow. Amazing. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Bring your friends and family and pets and everyone that can be involved. Because Hikaru needs to bounce back. He's trailing in this match with this game and the next game. Two games to go. This is his chance. He has to make a comeback. I really like the move here, Queen C4. That's a very nice looking move. The problem is MVL doesn't have to take. If you know MVL is going to take this queen, you're just going to take with a D-pawn and have this beautiful structure, fix your pawn so the D-pawn is no longer weak. The issue is if you play Queen C4, MVL is going to go B3 and go, no, you take. It's like the Spider-Man meme. And then you have to take on D3 and you've actually changed nothing. So that's the only issue. So Hikaru's just deciding how to do this. Another idea is rook c8 and queen c2. That's another idea. But let's see what Hikaru comes up with. Anna, do you mind if I go get my waffle? No, you should get your waffle. You deserve okay. that waffle. I'm going to go get the waffle. And it's I'm gonna all you. get so hungry. Yep, yeah, I'm taking over. Uh, usually, I like taking over when it's like I can also take over the Gotham Chess universe. But no, here I am. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm right, Hikaru. Today we are on the main stage on Hikaru's channel, and the secondary dance floor is over at Anna underscore Chess. That is my channel. Thank you so much for being here. We need you so badly. Hikaru has made it beautifully to the quarterfinals he finished first shared first together with the world champion magnus Carlsen in the preliminaries but today is a bit tougher than what we expected hikaru lost in the first game meaning that we are down to a situation where this game and the next game will decide whether hikaru can make a comeback this position as you can see from the evaluation bar is very close to equal which would likely mean that this game could finish in a draw, half a point for both players, and that will leave us with one final game where Hikaru has to win. It's a must-win situation, and he's going to go all in because this quarterfinals and semis and the rest of the event, the knockout format, is about mini matches. Two matches, one match today, tomorrow the other one, but there has to be a winner after the two matches. And today, for now, the Frenchman is leading. We need a comeback either in this game or the next one. Hikaru has to bounce back to send your energy all the way to him in California. Flower power, the frogs, whatever you want to send. Can we also make a new copy pasta with socks in it? Because yesterday we did ask Hikaru how many pairs of socks he owns. And the answer was a rather surprising 10 pairs how many socks do you guys own i i don't know how many i own but i think i have more than 10. Uh, just saying that maybe a good christmas present for hikaru is, is another pair of socks uh, what do you guys think about that that merch merch pair of socks more tsm socks he did get two pairs from tsm he did get two pairs from tsm uh, send your best copy pasta and a new copy pasta with socks yeah i think we need a new one a really good one create a new brilliant copy pasta with socks in it i'm back <laughs> welcome back welcome back we are creating a new copy pasta um that's based on socks because obviously yesterday's very important question was about how many pairs of socks hikaru owns mm -hmm. were you surprised were you as surprised as me about his answer that he literally knows how many and it's not a very high number uh, I, I think I have like 15 or 20 pairs of socks. 
Um, yeah, I would think I also have more than 10 because 10 doesn't sound a very high number. It means you need to wash clothes often. Yeah, or not, but yes. Uh, pre <laughs> no, preferably, yes. Pre preferably yes. yes. Preferably yes. yes. I mean, just, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't judge unless I can smell it. In this case, I judge. I'm from New York. I'm, I'm used to all sorts of beautiful, you know, um, uh, tingling sensations uh, uh, triggering my olfactory sense. Is that, is, isn't that what olfactory is, like, sense of sound? Uh, sense of, yeah, so. Okay, I am going to, um, I feel like we've done, we've done a lot of uh, promoting of, of, of Anna. So I'm going to take a moment and put on my Instagram story the beautiful Belgian waffle that I'm about to uh, eat. Because it is, um, it, it, it's, it's, this is crazy, is what it is. It's like the most delicious thing I've ever seen and tried and... Levy, sharing is caring. Where's our piece? Oh, no, no, no. Um, it, I'm eating it. No, no, no. I, I'm, no. Nope, sorry. Get your own. Uh, well, maybe I'll share with Anna, but listen, 30,000 screaming fans. Listen, guys, come out to New York. I'll do a giant meetup. We'll have waffles. We'll have beer. Unless you can't drink beer. Then wine, if you can't drink that, vodka. <laughs> there will be something for everybody. There will be something for everybody. Okay. Let us put up the picture of the waffle. I'm gonna have to check that Instagram story, but I don't know why I do it to myself. It's torture. I'm gonna be so hungry. Oh, real Gotham chess on Insta, by the way. Uh, look at it. It, it. It's glorious. It truly, truly, truly. Sorry if you don't have it. Instagram. I need to see it, and I'm gonna feel so bad after seeing it. This is a torture, absolute torture. It's, it's got a there. Belgian waffle, homemade peanut sauce, oh, mango, no, banana, it, strawberry, walnut. It looks even better than how I pictured it, and I'm a huge fan of waffles, but this is art. This is a piece of art. It's, it's like it's, an entire fruit salad on top of the waffle. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Real, I'm telling them, I'm real, real. It's it's up on the story, y'all. Um, Hikaru got a nice position. Uh, Aranyan has won. It's official that Aranyan has won his game, so it's one and a half, one and a half. And we will go to the final rapid game between those two. It's not winner take all, but it's winner take the match for today, and a draw sends you into tomorrow. Uh, with yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 quite nice. It's quite nice. Oh my god, and there was another little small one. There was there was two, and I ate the small one first because honestly I didn't think I was gonna make it back until like I I can't eat uh the waffle on stream because it's gonna be messy. So I I had to eat the smaller version. Um Anna, if at any point you want to bring food and brag to the stream, you are more than welcome uh, to do that. I don't have Belgian waffles. I, I need Lucy to make food for me too. Can can she send it over like a um, Europe delivery of, of nice food? Because in this well, <laughs> household, I'm the one who makes food. But if I'm streaming, I cannot make food and bring it. You know, it, I would have to stream cooking. That 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 is true. Like if 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 there was two content creators in this house, it would be McDonald's only. And I gotta say, I mean, I'd be completely fine with that. My weight and body <laughs> and organs wouldn't be, but uh, I'd be more than okay eating, you know, a quarter pounder with cheese deluxe, uh, large meal, uh, Dr Pepper, a little bit of ice, three cookies. <sighs> Ooh, not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> not but, yet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I love food. I'm a foodie and I do like to prepare food. But yes, uh, these these days with the champions to wear are busy days. So I uh, for today, I just made a brunch, uh, a, a very simple um, toasted bread with uh, boiled eggs. Uh, you boil the egg in a way that it's the yolk is still basically running and then you put it over the toasted bread. It's Ooh. nice and delicious, but it's been a few few hours ago, so I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> I might end up ordering pizza. Both Kevin and I like pizza, so I think we're gonna order because yes. <laughs> All right. I mean, you gotta now. treat yourself. Yeah. You gotta treat, treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. You, you know, you're contract you're contractually obligated to eat a bagel two times a week if you live in New York City. Literally, it's in the lease. No, it's I not. I love but bagels. We have bagels in the kitchen, actually. We do have bagels. Bagels are on point here, and pizza. Oh my god! Literally any pizza place except the dollar pizza place where someone got stabbed like a, a few days ago. That was like made making the news. Yeah. Someone in Manhattan, you know, said the wrong thing to someone, got stabbed. But the pizza was good. I'm sure they had good pizza. 
they ended up getting stabbed, but that's, I mean, <clears throat> it's New York City, you know? Sometimes you get pizza, sometimes you get stabbed. That's how it goes. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know if I want to order pizza anymore. But no, I, the, I mean, I'm not going to the, the pizza place physically. It's just a delivery. The pizza is good. Oh, it's delivery? Then it's fine. Then it's fine. Yeah. No, you know, New York is a drastic version of Pokemon. Uh, in, in Pokemon, if you make eye contact or even walk by a trainer, you have to battle them. In New York, it's mostly just eye contact. Oh, uh, no. Hikaru, guys, will play King F7, Knight B6. Uh, he actually did not have to lose some pawns here. Actually, a move ago, I was happy to just talk about pizza, but I actually think Hikaru might have missed Knight D7. Wait a second. Um... Uh oh! Wait, wait. I thought this game was um, just heading toward a draw, and then the final game is the all decisive one. But the thing is, we cannot go down in this game because then there's no fourth game. So this cannot be a win for Envia that closes the match for today. Yeah, King F7 and and uh... oh no 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 Rook D8 Rook D8 Rook D8. But the problem is on Rook D8 Knight B5. Uh, there's Knight B5. But the issue could be that MVL's activity is good enough. Like, Hikaru mm -hmm. might just need to sacrifice. Just go Rook C1 and just be active. But Rook C1, I don't see what's next. That's the issue. Knight B5, Knight C3. Oh, that, that's it. Yeah. Something like that. I sure hope that's the case. I sure hope that there's still glue in this position. He goes for the activity. He goes for Rook C1 and now F5. So he, yeah, he's just completely sacrificing the pawn. Uh, Giri and uh, MVL, uh, no, MVL's again not simuling. I made the same mistake yesterday. Why do I keep making MVL play two people? Uh, Giri and Carlson have drawn their third game. So let's see what happens in the fourth. Um... So there's three draws so far between Carlson and Giri. Um, it could be for the mean, but actually the first game, Anish Giri was in a completely winning position. <laughs> Yeah, he, um, he he had a he had his chance. He had his chance, but it was kind of for one move, basically, or may maybe two two moments that he could have he could have done it. And thank you, by the way, if you guys looked at my Instagram story and you liked it so much that you dropped the follow, thank you, Aww. Aww. thank you. Five hundred people decided that that is is a person that they wanted to support who posed Belgian waffles with fruit on top. I. One in every three of my Instagram posts was supposed to be chest tips. It was supposed to be the carousel style, but oh my god, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people post so much on Instagram. It's so much work, like, all these different... I'd rather just write something stupid and hit send on Twitter. <laughs> like... You can do it, Levy. You gain, like, a thousand followers with every post of yours. So you, you're you're doing well. I think Levy posted, like, 12 times on his Instagram profile, but every one of those have has gained him a thousand followers so the ratio that i post like hundreds of times but i'm not gaining so much with it you are somehow on the Don't, grind better more practical Anna, you are <laughs> so good with this reverse psychology because you know chat thinks you're so nice and when you when you say something like that they're gonna be like oh really oh then we should go um we should go, we should go help out we should go um, and help out Gotham Chess, who is growing his Twitter and Instagram at the stop. same time. Social right, media grind. We gotta talk chess. Anna, Anna, Anna. Enough plugs. Some angry person in chat is gonna call us cringe. So we need to. We need to focus. We need to focus. We yes. need to. Need to focus. Okay. How is Hikaru gonna defend this position? How is he gonna defend this position? Uh, is he gonna play King E6? Is he gonna play King E6 to attack the knight potentially and maybe go Knight B5? Yeah. The thing about Rook H1 is King G2, right? So you don't. You don't, uh, what do you do? It would make sense to try to bring the king, but yes, not a simple task. So this is an extra pawn for MVL, and that extra pawn is a pass pawn. He currently decided to go rook h1 and now back to c1, saying that if king f2, um, well, we could go for the draw, the yes. tablas, or Nietzsche, uh, rook h1. Yes. Um, Repetition. Yes. <laughs> uh... So instead of that, what nothing. can MVL do? He has to go for making some progress. Knight b6, that makes sense too, in order to vacate the d5 square so that you can start pushing your pass pawn at some point. Uh, and rook c6 looks like it forces you to play knight d5. But I'm assuming he's going knight a4? Is that what he's trying to do here? He's trying to go knight a4? Oh, oh, knight d7 oh. threatening with a fork that Hikaru will not blunder because he is doing his puzzle rush every day. 
Yeah, rook c7, rook c7 and uh, knight e5 allows king e6, king d5. If black can successfully blockade d5 and knight b5, black is more than okay. But now Hikaru, uh, well, there's knight c5. Ah, but knight b5! Knight d4! Ooh. Rook d4, nice idea! And that's it, yes. that's it, drop, drop. He saved it. Is. it. It is. It's so important. Let's let's show it again with more detail. That here, white cannot keep this outpost on c5 because mm -hmm. black is threatening to capture the pawn, sacrifice it temporarily. But then next move, you are taking the knight on c5, and nice. if the knight moves away, we can simply attack the pawn from d7, and the white king from g2 cannot make it back. See that rook drama was very smart because it shifted the king further away from the d pawn. Very nice. And now MVL has uh, basically offered repetition of moves. I was thinking that MVL's plan here was to go knight a4 to try to blockade on c5. Uh, but it's really hard. I mean, he Hikaru definitely made a mistake losing his d-pawn. Uh, but he's lucky enough that he he sacrificed... He did something very instructive. Yesterday, he had a nice instructive endgame against Feruja. Today, sacrificing the pawn and getting active pieces. Don't hang on to every pawn that you have. Mm-hmm. All the time you don't need to because you can get a very passive position nice idea uh nice idea from hikaru what 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 else to say another pawn is gone i guess he will just take it because if a, if knight e5 check the king will attack the knight so it doesn't matter that rook takes d4 will come or king e6 first this move order should work the same way i guess it's the same is it not the same i guess the pawn's not going anywhere I guess. I guess, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. H6 would make the most sense here because you don't want to give up the f4 square. Knight f4 should not come with a check. That will mean that the pawn will be pushed to d5. So h6. Yeah, I guess, that like I said, they're, they're, the pawn is just not going anywhere on d4 and if white plays some move to get around that <laughs> well now he's just trying to shove it down Icaro <laughs> he, mm. and Icaro still doesn't take the pawn because <laughs> like, there was discovered checks with the rook Icaro just nah 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 okay looks like this will be a draw Let's see what uh, what we what else we can come up with. Is there any other games, any other sort of content that we can put up on the screen? I've been informed that we have thirty two thousand viewers, which is a lot. Hi, welcome to GM Hikaru's Twitch channel. We're not GM Hikaru, but he's currently <laughs> playing in a one point five million dollar online chess tour. He's in the quarterfinal stage right now, trying to win the thirty thousand dollar first prize. Uh, my name's Levy. Anna is one of these sides. I don't have the Streamlabs open, so she's... And we're, uh, we're international oh, masters and streamers, and we're trying to cover this uh, for, you know, this loving and amazing community on his channel, and I hope we're doing a good job. So, hi, and hope uh, feel welcome. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining us. It's insane that the numbers just... It just keeps going upper and upper. We are... Uh, how many hours? This is the third hour of coverage of today's action. This is a very long event. It takes nine days to declare who is the winner, but the, the format is super exciting, meaning that every single day there's something to worry about. Right now, what we worry about is Hikaru, first of all, making a join this game because he was in a bit of a trouble. And next up, after he makes a join this end game, he needs to win must win situation in the final yes. game of this match so we need you we need all your energy we need all your support because hikaru so far is trailing he's not doing well in this starting quarterfinal match of today he has to win the next game uh oh the clocks just started flashing uh oh oh it says my connection is lost is yours oh as well? no <laughs> Is your uh, connection lost too? Potentially, yeah. So uh, the past few days, chess.com hit its all-time high viewership numbers, like 3 million people online at the same exact time. Uh, Hikaru's game is still going. This tournament is being hosted on Chess24, uh, so I will just have to go over there uh, and, 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 and get, get the game feed from, from over there. It's not going to look pretty, chat. It's not going to look pretty, so everybody brace yourself. 
it ain't gonna be that pretty. Yeah, but it's crazy to think that the reason why the server has gone down is because there are, again, possibly over 3 million of you using the platform of chess.com, which is a huge, an insane number, record-breaking number, 3 million active users at the same time being on chess.com in a day? That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. crazy. And uh, we're pumped. We are pumped. Uh, that's going to come with growing pains, obviously, but uh, here is my best at trying to replicate it. I'm just, I'm getting the game feed directly from Chess24. They do put on the event. Uh, let me just give me a second. And I, th here we go. Five, four, three, two, saved. Mildly. I did say it's going to be, you know, potentially, potentially look different. But at least now we have a game feed. Now I got to save the bottom side too. I got to say, I, I got to save the bottom side as well. Yeah, are you able to, or shall we remove that board? No, 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 I will. I, I, I you know, it's a process. We got to go back into studio mode. The clocks give me, like, flashing give me anxiety. Yeah. Um, so. Totally understandable. In the meantime, let's sum up what we have witnessed so far. There's already one player who won his match today. His name is Tim Rajabov from Azerbaijan. He has beaten the American Wesley. So Wesley has to win tomorrow's match. Or if he does not, Tim Rajabov moves on to the semifinals. Um, that semifinal will feature either Hikaru or his opponent, Maxim Veselagraf. Hikaru, for now, is trailing. He's a point behind because he lost the first game. This game is likely to end in a draw, and then the final game will decide for today's match. So every match consists of four rapid games. After the four games, there will be either a winner or for today, 2-2 two, two is fine too, because tomorrow will be the second match and the playoff if it's still a tie after the two matches. Anish Giri and Magnus Carlsen have been drawing all their games, so that's a tie too. And Levon Neronian has just tied the score against Nepam Yashi by winning the third game. So we shall see whether there will be a winner in those matches or not. There's a lot of peer pressure on me, so why don't we do a poll? Hey, mods, poll. Before I, before, 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 we, we, we should decide where we're going to watch if, if, if our servers are having problems. All right. Where are we doing it? We going, we going directly to the source 24 or we going, uh, you know, we going, we going to lead chess mods. I mean, I'm, I think I'm a mod, but I'm not, I, I can't do everything. I can't do everything. So, um, let's, uh, <laughs> wow. That is winning by a lot. I'm not going to lie. That already looks like it's going to be a landslide vote. Um, okay. Yeah. It doesn't look like we need a poll because the chat is, is going all in on Lee Chess. And 37,000 of you. That's amazing. Welcome, guys. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to have to... Hold on. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Thank you so much for joining. This is, this is insane. We are witnessing history here. Uh, one side going down because there are 3 million people connecting to it. Apparently, Chess is trending. Chess is booming again. As you guys have seen, the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit, has caused yet another boom for chess during the year 2020. And the Google search for how to play chess has never been as high as right now. Meaning that we are left without our favorite site, chess.com. We are moving over to, I believe, Lee Chess or both Lee Chess and Chess24. Levy will figure out how to place the boards there again. But thank you so much for being here. We so need you. Can we make that number hit 40,000? That would be the first. That would be the first. Every day we had around 30,000 of you watching, but can we hit 40,000 today for Hikaru? He needs your support. He needs your support because he's losing at the moment during the match. He has to make a comeback. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to keep up the energy, uh, but I'm... <laughs> I'm uh... <laughs> I, I'm I'm deep in the trenches here of uh, of trying to crop this thing for us. So That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry. Uh, Thirty-eight thousand. Can we make it to forty thousand? Can we do that over at GM Hikaru? Yeah, this is uh this is crazy, guys. Hikaru is trying to just get basically like get this game out of there. Just 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 get out of there and uh, and 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 try to. Oh, and moves are shuffling in now. Moves are shuffling in. 
moves are shuffling in and the game should be over very soon the game should be mm -hmm. over very soon uh in fact i think i think it'll be over the next few moves and have have other games begun is the question let me take a look at the rest of the matches. So we're going to have, uh, yeah, Nepomnishi and Levon Aronian, they are playing already their final game. Yep, there uh, it is. Giri Carlson still hasn't started. Okay. So if he draws, there's no game four? No, uh, it's completely okay. It's actually completely okay. Hikaru yeah, is now he down... shouldn't have lost. So with a loss, mm -hmm. he would not have had the fourth game. But yes, a draw is fine. Yes, draw is completely okay. Their game will be starting in about 10 minutes. Are there any other games live right now, is the question. Yes, the Aronian Nepomish game. Okay. I will... Okay, we, we'll watch that on the... on the, I guess the big screen, and then we'll await... Oh, Rajab of Minnesota are done. Ah! Okay. Okay. Perfect. Chat, we're like one minute away from having two boards again. <laughs> this is uh, this is something I did not anticipate to happen. So I'm naming the source, by the way, uh, for because I have to I have to window capture. I'm naming the source. Uh, chat is awesome. That's what I've named it. So chat, you guys are awesome. And how many? What's the view count right now? What 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 are we at right now, chat? What's we dropped a bit below, but we were at thirty eight, approaching thirty nine. I want to see that number back at it again. We need your support. We surely yeah. need your support. Should have stopped the count when it was at thirty eight. I don't know why we decided to. Uh... Okay. Much like Anish Giri's tweet of yesterday, he was the sole leader after day two of the preliminaries, and then he was almost eliminated. He almost didn't make it to the top eight. Okay, this is the best that we're gonna get, chat. So, do me a favor, we're here to support Hikaru, and when the servers get back up, uh, then we will know everything. That's it. We, 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 we will know what's good. Um, what, other, what, what, what games are going on? It's a big drop-down menu here of, uh, of all the games I can choose from. Oh, Magnus and Anisha are already playing. Here we go. Magnus and Anish are already playing. This is the final game of the day between the two. Anish Giri had a winning position in round one, in today's game one against Magnus, but Magnus somehow escaped. And that was uh, a very important escape by Magnus Carlsen. Ever since the other two games were a lot more solid and this final game is starting with a solid opening, but this is just the beginning. Maybe we will see another one of those complex sharp positions less likely but um anything could happen i don't think they will risk too much because there's too much at stake in this one game so if it's a draw nothing happens tomorrow they have a new match but if one of them decides to go all in that could backfire so i don't think this will be a very sharp game but even in a positional strategic long-term strategic battle anything can still happen that's one of magnus carlson's biggest strengths that he can basically squeeze uh, blood out of stone i was told that i should not say water but that's how i always say it, squeeze water out of stone yeah apparently it's 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 blood which is kind of gruesome uh yes. I, I also always said water uh, yeah. I, I also always said that i like water i'm gonna keep saying that if that's all right water um, yeah it's completely fine it's Totally okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it actually defaulted to Magnus's view of the position. That was kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, what if I want to see it from Anisha's perspective? What if I want to flip the board? Oh, go. I have it from Anisha's perspective. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's an E45 position. Actually, both boards look very similar. Very tough to tell the difference between the two boards. Uh, small board, we have some... Queenside advancement by Nepo. He's pushing some uh, some some pawns B4 and A4, and uh, Mr. Geary is doing some serious maneuvering here. Doing some 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 serious maneuvering. I've been in, I've been informed that uh, things are things are back. Are we back? Uh, are we back on chess.com? Thank you everyone for your patience while we fix the template. I still don't have my live chess bag, but maybe yours is faster. Potentially, I, I'm I'm actually not. I don't know. I'm I'm 
Listen, I'm just here to enjoy the show. That's that's what I'm here for. Uh, I still can't get back into live, but that's all right. That is all right. That's all good. Uh, listen, we um, we just do as we're told. The game is up on the screen. We don't have Hikaru just yet. To remind everybody what the format is, Mr. Geary and Mr. Carlson are currently all level at one and a half, one and a half. Which means that a draw ties them today. Mm -hmm. The winner of this game wins the mini-match today. Hikaru is down one game. So Hikaru must win to even the score today. Otherwise, he loses the mini-match for today. Uh, Aronian and Nepo. Nepo was winning. Aronian won the last game. So they're also equal. And if they draw, then it's a draw for the day. And if one of them wins, they win the day. Mm -hmm. So Simple. that's the difference between the previous two. That was my bad at the start that I thought we are using the same format. But instead of the Magnus Carlsen store, three matches. There We had three matches here. There are two. And only if after the two matches there is a tie, then we go to see the two Blitz games and potentially Armageddon. So playoffs will only happen if after the two rapid matches there's no winner. Makes sense, Anna. That makes sense. Uh, we're far from we're far from all these things. Uh, we we are we're we're quite far from all these things, though. And I have been informed that everything is saved. Things are saved. Yeah, I think we are back. I do have my live chess back on chess.com. Do you also have it? I. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm 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 getting there. Okay, I'm getting there. I gotta. We are back. We are back, ladies Listen. and gentlemen. Three million active users might break the server because it's a record-breaking number. It's huge how popular chess has become again, and we cannot wait to see where else this boom will take us. But yes, the Google search for how to play chess is a record-breaking high. The number of uh, users daily on chess.com record-breaking high. We we get all sorts of interview requests. Yesterday, Hikaru had to leave the show because he had two interviews going on the Today Show and then a very important interview as well. So busy times for chess, but it couldn't be for a better reason. This is great. It's absolutely amazing. It's really nice to have a co-host that can calm down like scared people and like tell them that everything is going to be okay. You know, because I get to like fill the dead, you know, dead air with like, you know, getting it all like, 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 like working. And I was just like, guys, like, chill, bro. Like, it's all good. Like, what are y'all, what are y'all so scared about? Because everything's going to be fine. Okay. Everything's gonna it's be okay. amazing. If the platform breaks, it means that we are hitting numbers that they never hit before. It's huge. This is a huge era for chess. Like, uh, yeah, memes aside, uh, no one ever expected this amount of people to play chess. I mean, that's kind of sad when I describe it that way, uh, but it's <laughs> it, it's true, Anna. Like, we it's didn't true. think we'd be this popular, and well, there you go. It's happening right before our eyes. So now let me just boot up the second game before Hikaru starts playing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We are waiting for his game to start. The rest of the games are underway. This is the final game of the day for everybody, except for Teimur Rajabov, who won his match after three games. He took down the World Fisher Random Champion, Wesley So, with only three games, two of them with the black pieces, and he won those two games with the black pieces. Incredible performance by Rajabov, who is one step closer to the semifinals. Yes, this is uh, kind of some some sort of theoretical position. I think I think maybe there are some surprises here. Uh, Magnus playing bishop a7. That looks a little bit peculiar. Uh, in this game with Aranyan, God, it's good to have familiar interface back. You know, the like on chess twenty four. Like if I, I was like dragging my mouse and like different things were popping out at me, it was terrifying. It was like a haunted house. Here, look, I can move around freely. Ha ha, I'm running around the chessboard. I can draw arrows. Everything's good. Oh my god, it's nice. It's good to be back. Good to be back. Sorry, chat. Sorry. Uh, that was a little bit of a scary experience. The rook on e6 is going to go down here, and Nepo's a lifelong e4, e5 player, so he's got a serious understanding of these positions. Mm -hmm. What is happening here with Magnus's game? That's a great question. Knight g4, bishop e3 was some wild stuff. 
It is wide. So the F2 pawn had to be guarded after knight g4. The threat was bishop takes f2 or knight takes f2. Knight e3 prevents that threat. And now black could decide to take on e3. Black could decide to take on e5 or, or a combination of those captures. On e3, do you take with the knight? Will you take that with the bishop? Which trade is better? I, well, I, I'm thinking knight. Not mm -hmm. not this knight. I drew the wrong arrow. Yeah, knight knight mm -hmm. takes bishop here. Uh, looks quite good. And uh, well, then the position is. So I don't know, it's kind of nice for Magnus, even though of course white white still has perfectly okay position. I like that bishop on a seven a lot. That bishop in the corner. A seven looks very nice. No moves in the Hikaru game. Yeah, I'm still updating. I just don't want to miss the start, but I still don't see that game starting. Of course, they have a bit of a break. Uh, that's the game that finished last, so the other players were ready to start, but Hikaru and his opponent, Maxime Vashelagrav, do get their 10-minute break as well. Yes, they do. Very deservedly so. Mm -hmm. Hikaru, very impressed with numbers. Ah. Uh. Chatovich. We've turned everybody into an Ovich. 35k hype. That's 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 big numbers. Mm -hmm. Doing big numbers, chat. Uh, Hikaru is waiting for the game. He's obviously not playing at this very moment. But just in case he's watching, which drop he your favorite. Most likely is. Probably is. Yeah. Drop your favorite emote. Drop your favorite uh, GM Hikaru emote. In the chat, he's got to win his next game. That's uh, there's there's no way to beat around the bush. He's down two one. There's one game remaining. He's got to tie it. He can't win the match today, but that's why we come back tomorrow. So uh, Hikaru's got to he has to win. He has to win. He does have to win. Hoping for the best in this final game, which is about to start. Beginning any second now. Chat, you know what to do. When the game begins, y'all let me know, and I will uh, I will pull it up on the big board. Wonder what it's gonna be. Wonder what it's gonna be. What opening are we gonna get? I don't know what to predict. I felt like the opening choices weren't bad. It's only the first game that went a little out of control, but now we have the white pieces again, as in the second game. And in the second game, reminder that Grunfeld. It was Maxime who went for a sideline that almost backfired. Hikaru got a really nice position and a, a, quite a big advantage. We are sad that it wasn't converted into a full point, but Hikaru did amazingly well in that Grunfeld. So it is actually Maxime who will have to switch to something else. He cannot play that same line. Yeah, he definitely can. Uh, that position did not, did not go well, but we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens. This one, with Giri, Giri gave away his dark squared bishop. He's taken back with the knight. And this pawn on a5 and this pawn on e5 are a bit suspicious. So right now, Anish can literally play knight takes pawn. And that's just a, that's just a free juicer. Like, there's, like, there's, I can't say it any differently. Knight takes pawn is free. So Magnus will be a pawn down to Anish. And Anish is going to try to do his best uh, to try to convert that. There it is. Yeah, it's not going well for the world champion today. He he escaped from a lost position in the first game, and now it's a pawn down. E5 is always hanging, so we knew this already from the previous Magnus Carlsen tour. We are fourth right now on Twitch, which is crazy. Thank you so much for making Hikaru stream be the number four stream on the entire platform of Twitch. It's not the chess category. Hikaru is the king of the chess category. He, it's the overall Twitch platform among English streams, number four. Thank you so much. And I also am being informed that Hikaru is so motivated, so encouraged, thanks to your support, all the subscriptions, so many of you watching, that he's considering taking part of more events of the Champions Tour. It's a 10 event tour, but they can decide how many of them they want to take part of. They are not obliged to take part of all of them. Now, it seems Hikaru is more and more encouraged because of you guys, the fans. So thank you so much. Maybe we'll see Hikaru competing in all of them at this stage because he wants to show up for you guys. He wants to be there. 
Yeah, exactly right. Uh, there are parts of this tour that have more prize money and then ultimately seed you for the final, 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 like the final of finals, which is going to be in September of 2021. You have to take part in the majors. To make it to the majors, you either have to be invited, uh, depending on past results or how handsome you are, uh, or uh, you have to w qualify uh, in one of these like regular tournaments. You don't have to play in every single regular tournament. But you guys are being so amazing. Ikaro wants to go and play to represent uh, not just himself, but also... I mean, in many ways, <laughs> Ikaro fights for uh, for chess on, on Twitch. I mean, ex exceptionally high-level chess. One of Basically, the only guy that's doing this as many hours as he's doing it. So, thank you for being here, chat. Thank you for being thank here. So and we have moves. We officially yeah, have moves. <gasps> the Trumpowski! My favorite opening! Ooh, well, no, it's like my second favorite, but... Interesting choice for the final game, but yes, it... It is bishop g5 on move too, so Hikaru switches. Hikaru wanted to get the surprise in. Yes, wow. I don't remember the last time Hikaru played a Trumpowski. Oh my <laughs> I gosh. I also don't, but I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. Keep spamming those copy pastas, by the way. The new one with the socks, the flowers, TSM logos. Support Hikaru because this is it. This is the game where he has to win there's no other result that can be good only a win that's the one result that we can get here yeah we have we have to win uh and the point here is that you you bring out the dark squared bishop early to uh to g5 and then you take the knight on f6 that's 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 literally it and what you do is you replace the dark squares with the with the pawns uh and black kind of takes the damage to the structure but has more pawns in the center and has two bishops but probably won't castle this way so he goes for queen b6. Now, actually, big question here. Does Hikaru go queen b3? Will he trade the queens? That's a very good question. Usually, after queen b6, that's one of the main decisions to take, queen b3. And if if not queen b3, what would be the other move you think that Hikaru is considering, queen c2 or queen c1? You've you got to deal with that b2 pawn hanging. He goes for queen d2. The, the engine's not going to love this. Uh, it's probably going to think that there are ways to punish this. Uh, but sometimes in chess you need you need something ugly uh, to get something beautiful, <laughs> and and that is... it would have been too solid. So considering the match situation, he cannot just go for that close to equal endgame. He wants to keep the pieces on the board. Yeah, it's uh it's not best, and he would never do this unless he actually had to win. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, but there, there this the, this is this is how we have to do it. MVL is playing very principal chess, playing knight c6, queen b6. Probably he will go e5 at some point and try to instigate in the center. I don't think this came from any like sort of deep preparation. I think like Hikaru literally just said, I'm going to play d4, knight f6, bishop g5, and that's it. Yeah. It doesn't just seem like. Just to surprise Maxime before Maxime can surprise Hikaru, because obviously Maxime must have prepared more Grimfeld lines, more um, defenses. I guess it would have been the Grunfeld, but a different line of the Grunfeld, if it was going to be the Grunfeld. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Hikaru's going uh, for a think. I mean, there, there's different ways to do this. Oh, I guess I should refresh because clocks are frozen. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. You can also play DC5 to force the queen to move and then continue your development. That way you seed control of the center. So you're really giving up a lot. You're giving up a lot, but you're doing it with a long-term hope of playing a uh, weird, imbalanced position where you have winning chances. Unfortunately, you also have losing chances, but you have winning chances. Yeah, we need this position to be complex. Yes, queen b3 would have been two solids. So this is playing this move due to the match situation. Uh, we will not look at the evaluation bar for now. It's not. It's not pleasant, but... At the same time, we need to explain that 0 0.65 or whatever it says at the moment is not that much of a deal. One point, up one or minus one, would be a pawn, a verse up of, of a pawn. This, what the advantage says now for black, is half a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, not really a big issue, especially when there are so many pieces on the board. I think the evaluation actually will, will switch to closer to equal within a few moves. That would be my prediction. 
Now the question is, how, yeah, so MVL does the very natural thing. If you don't have a second pawn in the center, put a pawn in the center. Hikaru goes knight g3, we have bishop e6, and probably we're going to get castles. Man, I gotta say, it's a really good example of why you can't play, you just can't play certain openings uh, against, uh, against a certain level of, uh, of player. Like, Hikaru has to mix it up. He has to go way out of theory and just have a position that isn't traditionally considered good to just create imbalance. And uh, while well, MVL is doing the right thing, I mean, Bishop e6 and Long Castles, and um, I wonder what Hikaru's going to do. Is he going to castle short, or is he just going to play b4? Hmm. I would just go b4. I mean, why not? Just go for it. b4. No, b4. Might Maybe. Well. That's so logical. So logical with the uh, opposite side castling. Hikaru has not castled yet, but it's highly likely that he's going to go castle king side. And there we have it. <laughs> man oh man king b8 is of course that is a uh, one move you could play man but we're gonna castle into this i guess he has no choice i guess he castle shorts out of, out of the equation now b4 yeah. a4 b4. it's all in it, it's all in it's it has been all in from the moment he played queen d2 it's all in because he has to go all in it's the match situation so Opposite side castling is all about who gets to the king first. It's going to be a brutal attack, flank attack for both. White will push on the queen side, black will push on the king side. Black already has a semi open g file. See, there's no pawn on g7, so the rook could go to g8 and try to attack. But I'm hoping that we're going to get a few tempi b4, a4, b5, and speed up the attack. Pro I don't know which one you start with. I mean, I would assume you start with b4 because it hits the queen. Uh, but who knows? Maybe that's not even the right way to go. Maybe you want to play a4, a5, and wait to play b4. Only play b4 at a certain moment. At the same time, you can play something like knight h5 and just go for this pawn. But that looks... I don't understand what you're doing after bishop e7. Although the knight on h5 actually isn't touchable. Mm -hmm. No one can get to it because it's protected. Yes. Huh. That's true that perhaps it would be a good idea to hop to h5 if we can. And hmm. yeah, why not knight h5? I just didn't like it because knight g7, uh, sorry, uh, bishop e7, and then like knight g7, as I was going to say, just doesn't mm -hmm. do anything. I mean, okay, so you get here, and, and, and. What's up, subs? So we put on sub only. Appreciate your support of the channel. Thanks for the energy. We need it. We need it. Hikaru needs it. MVL is a, is a damn good chess player. He is top 10 in the world, I think, in every format. Mm-hmm. Formerly number one in the world in Blitz. I don't know what his rapid is, but I think he's top ten. So, uh, one of few people who's in the top ten for all three. Yeah, it's true. It's very difficult to be in top three for all three formats. He's very, very good. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm just gonna say this. I mean... The, the, the French Twitch viewers are just absolute savants at trash talk. I mean, they have they have swarmed my channel in the past, even when I just do sub battles. Even if I'm playing a French GM, they always support each other. So we got to win or else there's going to be a damn lot of trash talk for the next 24 hours <laughs> until we can come back tomorrow. So they already started. They were <laughs> putting emotes and writing BAP and all this stuff. No, I, I love the French community and how supportive they are of each other. And Maxime, he's such a great guy, but... There's no friendship now when it comes to the quarterfinals because only one of them will move on to the semi. So as nice as he is, as friendly as he is, we need Hikaru to mm -hmm. win this game. It's all in. All in. Yeah, and uh, apparently MVL's move uh, here is to completely ignore everything and play H5, which actually makes a lot of sense. In self-capture mode of chess, you can take your own pieces and actually Rook, H Rook takes pawn would probably be the best move. You just open up the entire file. So... Uh, he might go for h5. Maybe he... A move that you don't really want to play is something like a6. I'll tell you why. Because a6 stops knight b5, but then can be a target in the future for a push. And then... Uh, so chat, sometimes the attack that's coming toward you isn't always something that you should respect. Um, on a, and Black Pepper cheered 2000 bits. Chat is moving really fast. So if I miss something, it doesn't mean you're not appreciated. It's because... Uh, ooh, d4... It's because we're going to miss stuff on the board if we, uh, Ooh. but, uh, thank you very much, obviously, as usual, hearts in the chat. D4 is a good move, Anna. 
It is. Good it's move. a very annoying one. Maxime is playing really well. Uh, what can we do about this? This pawn, pawn break in the center undermining our b4 pawn. It, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very practical. It might have objectively not been the best. Maybe h5, h4. What's going to happen now is he's going to trade the pieces. He is going to trade the pieces. And we, uh... Well, Hikaru doesn't go for a trade. Sharky gifting five subs. That one I saw. Uh... So bishop c4 is a bad move. Apparently MVL here has to go queen c7 and open up the files like this. I am dying that I can't eat this waffle. Like, I'm sorry, it's just staring at me, and I'm I, we're gonna fight, me and this waffle. Like, Wait a second, I didn't realize you brought it here, but you haven't had a bite? No. Nope. That's torture. Levy, why are you doing I, it to yourself? I don't want to... Listen, the, I'm not... I don't want to chew on stream. We got like almost 40,000 people. Oh or my I gosh, I didn't realize you haven't even had a bite. I thought the idea was that you will, you know, sometimes get a bit of a piece of it, a strawberry. All right. Fine, <laughs> chat. Oh my god, an MVL played Queen C7. That's not good. That's not good. Are we going to take a bite? Yes. Do it for us. Do it for us. I'm starving. <laughs> Here it is. That is the Belgian waffle. Look at that fruit on there. Let's take a bite. It looks amazing. I'm so ordering a pizza after the broadcast. And I'm gonna have ice cream too. See, that's what you did with your Belgian waffle. I'm ordering pizza, getting some ice cream for Kevin and myself. And, and we gotta treat ourselves because there's no Belgian waffle in the house. Someone said, why is there pineapple? It's mango. It's the real fruit. Pineapple's a weird fruit. I like I like pineapple, but it's it's incredibly sweet. Um, okay. I like pineapples too, and Hikaru does like pineapples too. You can you can see it. Yes. You can see it clearly. A fashion so, statement. The the move here for black to give advantage, actually the only move for black. Uh, well black black can take on C4 and play knight a5. It's this nice move d3. D3 is a nice, a nice move. And what that does is it disconnects the bishop. And the rook is protecting. The bishop probably has to sidestep to this diagonal. But D3 looks a bit strange, because you just help your opponent activate their bishop. Mm -hmm. And even though you lose a knight, they take yours. Yeah, so... I don't think he'll go D3. That's such a difficult move to find. So the engine, of yeah, course, bishop is very C4's. smart, but bishop takes C4 is a human move. So the, mm -hmm. the evaluation is going... Again, more in favor of white will still showing advantage for black, but not as much as it was before. So that's what we want to see. That's the tendency. Yes, yeah, so Ricardo goes bishop d3. Now, I predict queen c3 from MVL. dc3 is the best move. Maybe he'll just go dc3, but queen c3 just, you know, the, you get, the faster you get the queens off the board, the faster you get the queen off the board, less of a chance you're going to lose. Queen op. I mean, it's no joke. Queen, queen's ability is, uh, is incredibly strong. Yeah, I do want to see that position. Or maybe even even better if, if it will not be taken the c3 pawn. What if what if Maxime just goes? Uh, okay, he has taken the pawn, but we are not trading the queens. Queen e2. Yeah, queen e2, and uh, what 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 what? Hikaru is sacrificing another pawn. Hikaru has just sacrificed three pawns. Three pawns in a row. The what C3 the pawn, hell? The C3 pawn, F2, <laughs> it is Pac-Man mode, all those pawns are gone. And yet, so this is the good thing about Hikaru's position. We count the pawns, Hikaru has four, his opponent has a million. Um, his opponent has three extra pawns. So the advantage would need to be minus three. Three is three pawns. Uh -huh. But it's not that much because he does have really active pieces and the Black King is more vulnerable. So he does have some compensation, cross fingers that he can make a big attack out of this because he has to. He has to. Bishop c5 and now of course we're going to get knight to uh, e4. We're going to get knight to e4. Yep, queen goes to a3 defending. And now rather than taking on c5, I would imagine Hikaru takes one of the two pawns. Uh, probably taking on f6 because then queen is uh, hitting e5. Mm -hmm. Queen is hitting e5, and, the, and and that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. Now maybe knight g4 comes back and hits everybody. Uh, the advantage yeah. that the evaluation bar shows is almost nothing for two pawns up with mm -hmm. an f2 pass pawn. Really? It means that really there is 
plenty of compensation here. So I'm so happy to see that he went for this. He gave all those balls up for activity because this is the way he has to play. It's all in. It's a must-win situation. I guess the best analogy to give, some, somebody made a good analogy in chat, you know, ma making a total mess of the position. Uh, it's like a five-round five round fight, you're losing the first four rounds. So in the last round, you gotta go, you just gotta go. And if you lose, you lose. But you bite down on the mouthpiece and you start swinging. And that's what Hikaru is doing. Yep. In a Blitz game, this would actually be brilliant, really, mm -hmm. because they would each have about a minute or two. Uh, in, a, in Rapid, it's still, you know, it's still good, but... Mm -hmm. Anna, the advantage is getting lower. And it's the, getting lower, yeah. The pawns are going to start falling. So, you yeah. know. It, just as a, a side note, can I say that I think Levin and Ronin is checkmating Yan Yapam Uh, Yeah, sure. That's a game I literally forgot was going on. Um, only issue is Aronian has barely any time on the clock, but it's, the engine says mate in nine. M9, wow. <laughs> M9, Aranyan down one and a half to half is going to win two games here. He's got rookie two. He's got queen g3 and rookie two. And that's it. Black, uh, Black is winning. Black is winning. He played the most precise line with 10 seconds left when he when he played that crucial move. Uh, the queen move and now rook e2. He's winning. He, he won the previous game to tie the score. And now he's winning this final game to win the match. What a comeback by Levon Aronian. This is insane. Uh, meanwhile, uh, MVL's advantage is, is all but slipped, somehow. Just all but slipped. Hikaru has a, has a way now to play knight f2 and bishop e4. He'll only be a pawn down and he'll have a killer bishop on e4. MVL has to stabilize, but his knight is completely out of the game. If Hikaru wins this game, literally it's a work of art. This game mm -hmm. is, 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 is... I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this will be... This will, but I don't, you know, I just want to pump the brakes because it's still a long way away. Giri blundered. A long way, but the trend is good. Anish blundered from that end game? Yes. So apparently, uh, Anish was passively defending and uh, is just lost now, but I don't exactly understand why. Something that he did here. Trading the rooks was bad? He was oh. a pawn up. He, he was a pawn up, and he still. Well. Yeah, he's dropping that pawn. It's, we can't really call this a pawn up anymore. Uh, but this is this is incredible. What a turn of events for for Anish, who was winning in the first game and now is losing the match. Nepo has resigned. Aranyan takes a one nothing lead in their match, despite being a game down. Comes back and wins the last two games. Huge, absolutely huge. Oh my goodness, Anish Giri, meanwhile, is about to become a Buddhist with all of his suffering in this end game. Uh, Magnus has a coordinated structure. Let's see if he can put it away here against the niche. Rook c1, by the way. Hikaru is continuously finding all the best moves. So in this position, rather than taking any, you know, going for any of the pawns, he plays rook c1, hitting the queen. MVL's only move to apparently apply any pressure is to put the queen in the center. How do you choose to put the queen there when you have all, two, trois, quatre, cinq, set? How do you say seven? Seven um, options? Chat? Um, <laughs> Well, it's like on the um, chat uh, seven. Okay, seven. That's with, with an S. Too. Oh, seven. So, okay. How do you say it? I don't I... know how you pronounce it. My. Oh wait then. Oh C. I for oh I for I skipped five to seven because I forgot six. It's like C, right? Okay, whatever, 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 set. whatever, whatever. Chat. That was me trying to flex that I know anything about French. Okay. <laughs> we did it so well. <laughs> we both failed. Even Chesbe knows. Chesbe's trying to coach me French. She's trying to help me produce the show. And and, 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 and and on Discord, she's like, idiot, this is how you pronounce words. All right, don't make an embarrassment of yourself on uh, on the channel. I'm like, Chesbe, it's too late. It's too late, okay? Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, what do we need here? What do we need for the comeback? The comeback has to happen. How do we do it? So knight f2, bishop f2, bishop e4. Mm -hmm. Bishop e4. Let's go like here, here, and here. Will it happen? Is it what we are about to see? And in terms of time management, we are a little lower on the clock, but it's still pretty close. The 10 minute mark. That's good. I'm also at the same time keeping an eye on that Anish 
versus Magnus Endgame, but it's just looking, yeah, looking very sad for a niche uh, that passive defense did not did not work. Although, although, although I just realized something. Although I just realized something. Um, if you go knight f2, bishop f2, bishop e4, MVL can play the very, very, very annoying queen to d2. Oh, and, and we don't want to trade queens. No, no, yes. no. Yes. So that is something that we have to, you know, you cannot even play all the best moves because you need to kind of constantly concern yourself with the fact that there's a very legitimate chance that you can lose the game. So, uh, sorry, lose the match, not the game, the match. Yeah. Have you seen the new copy pasta, by the way? Eat the waffle to make Maxim awful. Yes, I did see. Uh, I, I will take a bite in a moment, but I... <laughs> It's you gotta do move. it for Ikaru. You gotta do it for Ikaru. Levy, you don't see the responsibility. It's all on you. I can't okay. believe you're not taking this seriously. Everything is at stake, and all.